It is February 28th. We're back for the afternoon of day 26 million of the three-week Murdoch trial. Yeah, we're in week five of the Alec Murdoch murder trial. We are in the state's rebuttal case. So just for clarity and for help, state's case in chief, defense case in chief, state's rebuttal case, everybody is done with witnesses. Then you do generally part of the jury instructions, closing argument, the rest of the jury instructions. Sometimes you do all of the jury instructions and then closing arguments. And then the last like three jury instructions. It depends on the court. Sometimes they let the attorneys um, agree on how they want it done. And then we get to see how it is. In closing argument, when we get there, it's going to be the state, the defense, and then the state. The state has the burden of proof. Oh my God, it is week six. That's right. <sighs> Time is wibbly wobbly. The, the state has the burden of proof. They have to prove that Alec Murdoch committed the crimes he is charged of beyond a reasonable doubt. And the jury instruction will say that does not mean all possible doubt. That means all reasonable doubt. And they will give lots of examples in the jury instructions of circumstantial evidence. This is an entirely circumstantial evidence case. Circumstantial evidence and direct evidence aren't supposed to be weighted differently. You can convict on either. You can convict on a combination of the two or not. So circumstantial evidence is this case, and we will see what this jury does not until next week. I don't, uh, well, never say never. I suspect not until next week. This is a very difficult case. It's a lot of information because we have information about the murder. We have information about the financial crimes. We have information about the time. Uh, we have information about the roadside incident. We have information about Alec Murdaugh's addiction. There are a lot of factors here, and there is a lot of little pieces that the state has to put together. How well the state puts those pieces of the puzzle together in closing is a huge factor in this case for the jury how clear they make the timeline. And they are arguing over the same timeline because the forensic digital evidence shows what it shows. So they are arguing over the same timeline. Does this timeline give him time to do what the state's alleging? And remember, the state is alleging two counts of first-degree murder and the weapon crimes using the weapons to commit the first-degree murders. So there are three indictments here or four indictments here with regard to the weapons uh, the weapons charges and the homicide charges. And the jury's going to have to decide whether he did each thing. So with that, we should roll the intro. We're going to talk a little bit about it more. And, um, and then we're going to talk about the jury view. We're going to talk a little bit about what happened right at the end of court for those of you just checking back in that missed the end of the morning. And uh, then we're going to wait for the court to resume. We're, we're in kind of the waiting for the bailiff to yell, come to order. So that should be shortly. Let's go. Hey there, I'm Emily D. Baker, the internet's go-to legal analyst, breaking down the legal side of the pop culture and entertainment stories we can't stop talking about. I'm a big fan of the cursey words. I've been a licensed attorney for over 17 years, but this is not legal advice. This is where the law nerds unite to talk about facts, not <laughs> Let's get into it. All right, so... The state has to prove the case beyond a reasonable doubt, not all possible doubt. The jury gets to decide what the facts are. The jury gets to decide if the time of death is 850, 851, 853, after the cell phones went silent, if it's 9 p.m., if it's some other time, or if it's not been proven. They get to pick that. The state gets to pick, or the, apologies, the jury gets to pick which theory of the case makes the most sense. But a clear story and a clear theory of the case goes a long way because what you don't want to happen in this case is that the jury just convicts him because they've heard all this other evidence of him being a bad dude. They've heard all the evidence about him stealing from clients, stealing from a friend who's actively dying from cancer, whose wife needs to sell a property to be able to be by her husband as he is passing and Alec is still stealing money from them and then continue to steal after he passed. You can't convict him of murder because of that. They can use that as context, but they cannot convict him of murder because of that. And if he is convicted, that is one of the major points of appeal. 
if he is acquitted, if they come back with unanimous not guilty verdicts, it is done. There is nothing else that happens. The state does not appeal. Nothing else happens. Nothing. If it comes back hung, which means the jury can't all decide on a unanimous verdict that normally takes a little bit longer. If the jury cannot, and you'll normally see questions that indicate that there's an issue they can't resolve, not always, but normally. If they come back unresolved, then they have to decide if they retry this case. Remember, they chose, the state chose to go after a grand jury indictment in this case and then bring it to trial. He was not out of custody. He was not a threat to the public. They were going through the financial cases. They chose the timing on this. So for those that are like, Emily, you're super critical of the prosecution. Yeah, at times I am super critical of the prosecution. They chose they chose when to bring this case. They could have waited to bring this case. And there was no statute of limitations that was pushing them not to. They could have gone after the financial crimes and they had to know, they had to know that the defense was not going to waive time and was going to zoom, zoom through this case. So I said at the beginning, when the state brought this indictment, they needed to be ready for trial. I don't think that they were. I don't think that they were. They should have been ready for trial with a solid theory of the case, with all their exhibits ready, with reconstructions ready, digital reconstructions, if that's what they needed, which I think they probably did, but they didn't put them in. They needed to do all of that before the grand jury. They needed to do the confirmatory testing on the shirt before they went to the grand jury. They didn't. I thought that they should have. So once the state brings the case, they are then on the constitutional timeline. The defense can choose to waive that speedy trial. We've seen it in the Koberger case. They've waived the speedy preliminary hearing to hold it out in June. But the state should have known once they indict, there's no preliminary hearing. It just goes to trial that this defense team was going to be like, yeah, we're not waiving time. Go get ready for trial. Go. And I think the state miscalculated how prepared they were once they got into this trial. And that is why it feels so disjointed. Trying a case that is complex needs to be made simple. The state here has made it more complex. So it is more work for the jury to try to parse a theory out and find the needle in a haystack. And that's not their job. They determine the facts, but they rely largely on the attorneys having a clear presentation of the case. This presentation has not been clear. It has been convoluted. This has not been a clear and easy presentation of the facts. Clear and easy was the Brooks case. It's a lot of moving pieces in that case too, but the prosecution was ready for that trial and did a clear and easy, clear and easy presentation of the facts, even though it was a lot of people, even though it was a lot of facts. That is a big case. Over 70 counts in that case. And they made it clear to follow. This case has not been clear, which is why I keep saying this case not being clear leans towards a jury not being able to come to a decision. Because imagine you're in this chat and you're like, Oh, I absolutely have made up my mind. He did it. And then somebody else in the chat or on Twitter or wherever is like, no, but they didn't prove this and they didn't prove this and they didn't prove that. Sometimes you're not going to convince one another. Now, the jury has the benefit of not texting. They have the benefit of sitting down together and saying, let's run it back. Let's listen to the 911. Let's do it together. Let's talk it through. And they look at each other and they've been together now for six weeks. There's a mutual respect that generally um, builds amongst jurors. And so when they sit down, they talk these things out much different than, um, trying to talk it out over, over social media where you don't actually have a conversation because you, people read things into text. So you have a jury that's in a better position to have a conversation. But if you're like, he did it. If that's where you're at, he did it as a juror. He did it. He killed his wife and son. You're not going to move from that position. Because what you think he did is horrific and some of the most horrific crimes that can be charged. And if you think he didn't do it, 
and the state did have a rush to judgment and they are reaching and over pulling and reaching for evidence of other things to try to convict him of this murder. How do you move off that position? How do you move from that position of the state overreaching? No, you say no. I can't convict him on this. It hasn't been proven to me. And those two positions, I don't think can budge. There might be plenty down the middle who are like, I think he's a bad dude, but I'm not sure. And those positions will sway. But if you get people who are who are kind of 100% in their camp, you have a very real probability here. Different than in other types of cases. And I think part of that is because the state did not present a clean, clear case. Do I think they can find a conviction? Yes. Do I think it'll be hard? Yes. Do I think they can acquit? Yes. Do I think that might be easier? Yes. When the case is not clear, it leans towards acquittal. That's literally what doubt's about. But do I also think there are going to be some jurors here who are convinced? Yes. They're not supposed to have made up their minds yet. They're supposed to keep an open mind till the end of the case. But I know that that's hard. Isn't it? It's hard. Y'all, isn't it hard? It's hard to keep an open mind till the end. And it's hard to evaluate your own thinking and being like, where am I on this? Where do I feel about that? How do I think about this? It's not easy to do. I agree with you. Not easy at all. There's no sound yet, but the judge is back on the bench. Hopefully we'll have sound in a minute. I didn't have that muted a second ago. Do I have the tab muted? Did I mute the tab? Hold on. There we go. I want to see if we're going to find out what these emails are about, but it's hard. Y'all, and it's okay that it's hard. State's Exhibit 521 uh, is a worksheet showing steps and uh, time steps were taken along with some calculations about <laughs> how many steps per minute. It's come to my attention that there's a math error contained in the previously submitted exhibit. Uh, and I think the error bled over into the defense's exhibit, I think it's 156. A math uh, error? And so at this time, with the state's consent, the, the state would like to just simply substitute a worksheet with the correct math uh, for the previous incorrect worksheet. Are you the almost? Also, uh, has to be the same. Um, okay. Okay. Question, when will they do the field trip? Maybe at the end of the day today, maybe tomorrow. We'll see on where the state gets with their case. So we'll see. It depends on the state. Emily, if a jury is hung, can a judge make a verdict? No. Yes, sir. I don't know why they just muted the audio, but no. The judge does not get to find a verdict. The judge can rule on a judgment notwithstanding a verdict. Um, I don't know what they're approaching about. Something. I am hope, well, as they approach the bench, of course, the audio gets cut. I wish we could hear it, but we don't. What was the email about? I've seen a lot of questions in the chat. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Emily, will we get to see the crime scene? Jamie, I, they're not going to be streaming it. I think we will get to see photos of it. After the trial is done, some of the exhibits will be unsealed. Not all of them. I agree with that. I don't think all of them should be unsealed. But we will get some more. And there are, um, there are crime scene photos that are already available on websites like um, Court TV that have been released to the public. So will we get to see their jury view? No, because you run the risk of seeing the jurors. They can't do a jury view without the jurors. You can't stream the jury view without the jurors being seen. Um, but I very much want to know what they want everyone to not know. So questions, will the jury be sequestered when deliberations begin? I have heard nothing about them being sequestered. I imagine that they won't. They haven't thus far. It just depends on this state's practice for whether they want the jury to continue deliberating into the evening. Um, why didn't anyone do a test at the house? Someone sits in the house and someone shoots guns near the kennels. See if you can hear shots. Melissa Love, they did. The defense expert did that. Emily, can you ask them not to do closing on Thursday? I have surgery. Uh, my kid's personal Uber driver. I will put that out into the universe for you. It just depends on the state. But I totally, I totally understand the frustration. Closing arguments are my favorite. Will the judge wear his robe to the viewing? It depends on the judge. I imagine that he will. Um, maybe the email is about Putin him waving around autopsy photos. I think they would have just addressed that on the record. I, I, I think they would have just addressed that on the record. And I think the court might have just said, "Hey, um, just an FYI, they saw it." So. Um, 
does the judge go to the viewing? Yes, the judge will go on the jury view. The attorneys will go on the jury view. I don't know if they will take Alec Murda on the jury view. He has a right to be there. I haven't gotten nearly enough steps so bring today. The jury. Emmy, thank you for asking. How long do you think jury deliberations will last? It's hard to tell without... Once we get into the first day, it's a little easier to guesstimate. I normally give them a half a day to a day for each day or for each week of testimony. I think it could take them a week. I think a week is not unrealistic, but they also might be totally over it. So you never know. Um, I think a jury and a, or a verdict in a day would be very fast. Very, very fast. So we'll see. But they're bringing the jury. We love it when the jury, when we bring the jury. Um, the woman next to the judge, Elisa, seems to be his research attorney or judicial assistant. I'm not sure what they call um, them in this jurisdiction. And she's the real hero of this case. Here's why. She has been on point with case research, the rules. When the attorneys are making an argument, you will see her hand up to the page what the judge needs. Oh, she has you. been absolutely fantastic so i'm assuming you, the state calls dr kenny kinsey i am assuming that is the court's research attorney and uh she has been absolutely fantastic dr kenny kinsey do you swear the testimony that you i just hear i can hear like angela kinsey's voice saying dr kenny kinsey like i can just i can hear it so Lawyer can't talk to the jurors. Lawyers cannot talk to the jurors until they argue the case. Can Kenneth you arrange for the verdict to be next Kenzie? Thursday? -I, -E <laughs> I will ask. Welcome back, Dr. Kenzie. Welcome. Feels like a year since you were here. No shit. You were qualified last week as an expert, correct? Yes, sir, that is correct. What I would like for you to do right now is just to remind the jury, give them a little bit of background Who, on which your prosecutor education, is this? your work history, <laughs> uh, your credentials. Do you go here? You do we know you? Witness. Yes, sir. Oh, gosh. Got a degree from Clemson University, a master's degree. That's undergraduate. A master's degree from Troy University. Is you University. qualified to be Went an expert Clemson. witness? Yes, sir. I've got a degree from Clemson University. A master's degree, that's undergraduate, a master's degree from Troy University, a PhD from Walden University. I have formerly been uh, certified as a, by the International Association for Identification two different times for crime scene investigation and reconstruction. I've worked approximately 800 death scenes in my career, and I've handled and processed countless evidence that's a lot. in crime scene and the crime scene that's related disciplines. a lot disciplines. of death scenes. I have completed and passed proficiency in those disciplines as recommended by the International Association for Identification, which includes oral exams, research, technical work, uh, and also I worked under a qualified examiner for a determined amount of time. And I've been a police officer for approximately 30 years in various capacities. This and is just not to remind the jury, you were is uh, this the attorney that questioned him the first time? A crime scene forensics expert in this particular case. Yes, sir. I was. And, and real I've, quick, what other did types I miss of it? qualifications as an expert do you possess? I'm also a firearms instructor for what, handguns, did he do it last time? shotguns. Like he's the boss, boss they call AG. Them control rifles, but that includes sub guns, uh, fully automatic and semi-automatic platforms. He didn't question him last time, did he? Through the South Carolina Criminal Justice Academy. Right. Okay. I'm also a SLED concealed weapons permit instructor, and I'm formerly a law enforcement firearms instructor. I don't know who this attorney NRA. is. Now, you've had an opportunity to, do, to review the case file for this particular case, correct? I, I don't know who this yes, is. Yes, I have. And you've actually and see been what Avery out says. to the crime scene, correct? I have. Thank you, Courts and Why isn't anybody ready? Yeah, I thought it was a different attorney. I'll show you what's been previously marked as states. All right, Exhibit hold on. 526. Murdoch trial. You this is from Mandy Matney on Twitter. Alan Wilson, Attorney General of South Carolina, is questioning a witness for the first time yes, in this sir, case. Do. Dr. Kenny it? Kenzie is on That's the stand. Uh, I was so confused. Uh, this is the boss agent. Map from the Mosel yeah. property. I would like to offer this in evidence. I assume no objection. No objection. Three. I'm at the end of my third notebook for this trial. Um, okay. <laughs> Dr. Kinsey, um, we're going to keep our testimony today. The jury has no idea who you are. A few witnesses that the defense put up this past Unless week. Unless they voted for you, then maybe they uh, do. 
Did you have the opportunity to observe one witness named Michael Sutton, who was a forensic mechanical engineer for the defense? I did. Now, do you recall any of his conclusions or what his main conclusion was regarding the size of the shooter? I do. What was that conclusion? Five foot five two. Five two to five foot four. Yeah. Um, I would like now, Doug, if you would, I would like for you to publish. Uh, Doug, are you or, five or foot two? On, uh, Defense Exhibit 140. Do it, Doug. Go to page 49. Yep. Okay. okay. Avery Wilkes on Twitter do, also said this is Wilson's first moment, witness or speaking appearance of the trial. So they confused. published this in explains the, the fancy week. pen. And the, do you recognize these green lines coming out? Yes, sir, I do. Okay. And what do those green lines represent? Those green lines represent a predicted uh, static angle or, or uh, I don't know what you would call it, trajectory for possible shooters. And Doug, if you would go to page 74 of this presentation, please. He sounds like he knows Doug. He sounds like he and Doug are buddies. Do you recognize this photo Just, on page 74 okay. of the defense exhibit? I do. And what is it? It is Mr. Sutton pointing a pump action shotgun into the feed room at Moselle. Okay, and did Mr. Sutton make a, develop his conclusions as to the height of the shooter based on uh, math that he did in this particular case? He said it was trigonometry, but yes, sir, he did. <laughs> Based on your many years of law enforcement experience, education, and training, what is your overall opinion on his conclusions? I think his intentions are well, but I think his methods <laughs> were flawed. I think so that's a what fair I want answer. to do is, is I want to go back, and there were three previous green, uh, angles that we just looked at in the previous slide, correct? That is correct. And then he also determined an angle so here confused. in this photo, correct? That is correct. And those are the angles that he used to determine the height of the shooter, correct? That is correct. And, and Mr. Wilson, I don't know the totality of what he considered, but that was one of the elements, one of the criteria he used. Did Mr. Wilson introduce okay. himself to the jury? Just to refresh the jury's recollection. This is Waters' boss. Page four, it should be state 62. This is the it's elected AG. This is the AG what of the state. Of? That is a picture of what's been described as a quail pen. Go to page five, please. It, Yep, okay. And what is that a picture of? That is a close-up of that quail pen, and it has weathered cardboard on the one end. quail pen. Okay, and that, uh, for the record, is Exhibit 63 that that is a picture of. All right. And go to page 6, which should be State 64. And what is that a picture of? That is a close-up of what appears to be a bullet defect or bullet damage so in that So far, as direct is really okay. clear. Now, they, they base their angles... Uh, at least two yep. angles. Well, let's back up. There He's were two angles boss. taken from this particular one bullet hole. Why is that? There He's were. The I believe the original of the crime scene State agent of South Carolina gave a possibility. He's the bossy, bossy of boss. two angles of the uh, of the angle of impact in the cardboard. Okay. And what are some things that someone can determine from I like his examining style. a bullet hole in this cardboard? Well, the first thing is direction. It, it lets you know that you had one or at least at least one projectile fired from that direction. It's a pretty Smooth good indicator for direction. Okay, what's another thing that you can determine? Sometimes you can determine uh, the angle of impact and whether that bullet was affected before it struck that object. And, and what I mean is, was it deflected by flesh, or did it hit its target, or is there an internal problem with the weapon that would cause that bullet to be off-center? Are you comfortable with the direction that was determined by Special Agent Worley in this particular photo? I'm very confident of that direction. Okay. The defense determined that there were two potential angles. How confident are you that the methodology used to determine those angles are accurate? I have zero confidence from this piece of evidence as far as establishing angles. So that's interesting. You feel good about the direction of the bullet going into the quail cage, but you have a concern about the angle, correct? That is correct. Do you have a concern about the angle? The angle of impact, yes, sir, that is correct. What are two things that could affect the angle of impact 
on a surface like this cardboard. As I mentioned before, you could have that bullet could have hit an object, which we don't know, or it could be an internal problem with the firearm that causes it. When you think about, if I could explain, yes. when you think about a quarterback throwing a football, they spin that football and it makes Sports it stable ball? in flight. Well, a projectile coming out of the muzzle of a firearm, a single projectile firearm works the same way. You've got little lands and grooves in that barrel. And as that propellant pushes that projectile down the barrel, it twists. Now there's different twists depending on the firearm, but that twist called rifling most commonly, that's what my, my grandfather called it, but it makes that bullet stable in flight. Anything that can throw that projectile off of battery, whether it be striking something or a firearm problem, maybe fouling too much lead in the barrel, it, it, those kind of things will make that bullet off center. Now it still may go the general direction, but the rotation of that projectile could be off just a little bit when it strikes the target. So a good analogy would be a lineman getting his hand on a football and making it go wobbly, but it keeps going, correct? That would work, yeah, yes, sir. Ding. I believe it works. <laughs> Doug, could you um, zoom in on this hole real quick? So yes, this new attorney that you haven't seen is the Attorney General of South Carolina, like in charge of the whole state. Um, um, Dr. Kenzie, I'd like to ask you to step down which here is unique. And for demonstrative purposes. I'd like you to demonstrate how a angle of impact can be affected in cardboard with a dowel. Oh, there's an ex there's an exhibity. There's a demonstrative exhibity. Great. Describe to the jury what you've done with this box. I placed four strategic holes in this box representing a bullet defect in cardboard. I will talk more about As you what I think of the AG stepping in for a witness a during rebuttal later. We use dowel rod I don't have time. To determine direction and angle of impact. Because I'm interested now in this they testimony. Can, they can be as simple as a wooden dowel rod like you get at your hardware store. Or they make some real complicated ones made out of fiberglass. They sure if do. You can afford it. You know, most, most them, agencies and most crime scene teams them will fancy use a fiberglass ones. rod. But the wooden rods, as long as they're pretty straight and true, they, they work just the same. Them fancy things. So if this represents a, a projectile defect in cardboard, and may I say weathered cardboard, because Quail this pen. has been out there at least a year and a half since this incident took place, you place that dowel rod in that defect, and then you can get an approximate angle or angle of impact on it, but you can definitely get a more confident direction. If your shooter's over here and he's shooting this direction or over here or up or down, but it, it's not the end all be all. And, and I can explain that to you also. Okay. So how could, could you demonstrate the photographer how, is all up on that. Well, Back it's interesting second. stuff. Um, and Steph he put his rod in the box. Photo, if you would. Chat, I had to. I'm sorry. I you know. Saw the, uh, Double homicide trial. But he's got his rod in the box. You put the oh, rod in the... You put the rod in the box. You saw the defense expert's testimony, Mr. Sutton, I believe, last week. And then week, you show the jury the box. This hole. Can you explain to them how he, did, um, how he determined one. the angle of impact based on... Put a hole in the box. observing in this bullet entry? Step two. I can, Ms. Wilson. Please, please do so for the jury. What Mr. Sutton did with geometry and trigonometry and a whole lot of tools, but basically a protractor, oh no, I'm as sorry. we used when I testified previously, I can't, I can't help if it. you had a confident bullet defect, you can run a string and then put a level or a, a, it's a type of protractor, it's a bullet angle finder on top of that rod it's and you heavy. can get a general angle of impact in a fixed object. However, this isn't a fixed object. Because it's cardboard. He, he referred to that little mark around 3 o'clock. What did he call that? I think he called it a bullet wash. Could it be a bullet wipe? Bullet wipe, yeah. Something okay. like It's not a term I use, but okay. uh, I, I'm familiar with it. And what, what was he assuming that bullet wipe was caused by, based on the testimony you heard? From the angle. Don't put your back he, to the, the angle of what? The angle of impact. Okay. Odd uh, what else could witness. cause that? As we mentioned, striking the uh, surface beforehand, fouling in the barrel, something internal, uh, it just throws the bullet off course a little bit. It's not spinning the way it normally spins. So when it strikes, it doesn't strike, uh, it doesn't enter the way it normally would. It wallers a little bit, like that football we talked about. What about the dowel rod? Well, the purpose of 
inserting the dowel rod is to try to get the best angle or the best direction you can. And in a perfect world, the angle would be fairly confident, like another uh, bullet defect we're going to talk about. I can't. I've lost my Remember, mind. Remember, this is weathered, con uh, weathered cardboard. So once that examiner, and, and these rods are not caliber specific either because a, a crime scene investigator or an examiner can't look at a bullet hole and guess what caliber it is. That, that's, that's nonsense. So you try to pick the one that fits the hole the best. And with some of the fancy kits, you get a little shim kit with some little rubber grommets that you can place in there, make it fit a little bit better. But more typically, you just pick the dowel rod Ugh. that's closest to the hole. Could a dowel rod affect the angle of impact? Upon me inserting this dowel rod, I can do damage to that bullet defect. But more importantly, if when I remove it, If the rod's too big, it might, it might do damage. And it's very deceptive damage. It's not intentional but it can damage the angle of impact, especially cardboard. in a soft, unreliable object like yeah, cardboard. Don't damage the... You can, you can return to the stand, thank you. Yes, don't, don't damage the angle. The angle matters. I can demonstrate that, Mr. Wilson. Please, go ahead. Oh. What I'm saying, once a crime scene investigator gets what they need, they get their photographs, their measurements, their direction, so now this dowel rod's here. And none of us know this unless you've got a video of the examiner taking that dowel rod out. So we don't know what direction he or she might have pulled that dowel rod out because she's got her measurement. She's, she or he is not considering someone coming behind them and measuring again for something in a piece of cardboard. And we're not talking about in wood or sheetrock, we're talking about cardboard. If you pull it to the right, you, you gotta, cause that same you gotta pull it straight out that we got in the photograph. Likewise, if I pull it to the left, now it looks like that the projectile court has entered from a left to right direction. And you can go on and the poor court reporter up or down. That'll influence the appearance of that of that bullet defect because you've got a an object like cardboard. Something it's that a good no demonstrative. I just. Thank it's you. day 26. You can set that down. It's day 26. It's a good demonstrative, but he was putting his box on the on the uh, cord of the court reporters. Uh, so do you recall what the defense uh, expert testified machine, to the direction uh, and angle uh, the play oh, of that particular uh, angle of impact? It's I important do. testimony. And what was it? I think I one and mind. three degrees. But do you remember, like... Was it left going to right, up. right to left? Going up. And from what way to what way? What direction to what direction? He doesn't remember. Left to right, or right to left. Right. Yes, sir, right to left. I have to think about the quail pen in my head. Are you confident that the direction was correct on this? Yes, sir, I have no reason not to believe the direction. I mean, that, that would have to be a huge defect hole for it to throw the direction off. How confident are you in the angle of this? I have zero confidence in that angle. Of the, of the bullet entry. Doug, if you could go to page 21, which I believe is State's exhibit, a picture of State's Exhibit 38. Can you describe for the jury what that is right there? This Like the first testimony. defect, this is also a defect in a wooden, it's been described as a doghouse. This testimony now, is about. You can also determine the angle of impact and the direction The defense here, reconstruction I expert. Can. What degree of certainty do you have that they were right in the angle of impact and the directions in the doghouse. I place a lot more confidence in this angle because that wood is fixed. Uh, it, it'll show a much truer projection of the, the wood uh, angle is of fixed. Firmer than the cardboard. Can you um, hold on one second. How is this particular, I think you just described it, but real quick, how is the doghouse different from the quail cage it's in wood. determining the angle of impact? Well, the doghouse, if you look at it, is at least uh, a half inch to three quarters thick. So, like I said, you've got a stable, dependable bullet defect. The cardboard is two pieces of brown paper wood. with corrugated paper in between to, to cause, you know, for strength purposes. But as I mentioned, not only is the cardboard, uh, in my opinion, uh, not a good substance to shoot into. It's also weathered, so that makes it even weaker. 
Doug, can you go to page 42 on this exhibit? Yeah, you need you need the wood. The thicker the wood, the right, can, uh, truer can you, the angle. It doesn't have an exhibit number at the top, but this is uh, page 42 on defense exhibit 40. Can Y'all you describe gonna summon what this Rob photo and he's is? Gonna be like, what the yes, fuck? sir. That is a computer animated drawing of some potential trajectories into that quail pen. And the two gray boys here, what are they? They are uh, boys. He called them boys. They're two figures that were placed in that CAD uh, presentation to represent shooters. Uh, go to go to 46 of the same exhibit and describe what this is. This is one uh, animated suspect, I guess, or shooter placed in a similar CAD drawing. Photograph, Twelve year olds animation. like the minds in the chat. We've okay. all become 12 now year olds to today and I'm here for it. I'm here for it. It's been a long trial, man. And what it's, is, it's good testimony. Sorry, go back, that's the picture I wanted. This has actually been the, well, so there's three I like Bonnie Crosby, but this, this picture, has been correct? helpful. There are three angles. Two of them are from the same hole, correct? Yes, sir. One of them is from the doghouse, correct? That is correct. You are reliable, you, you were fairly, you believe that the doghouse angle is fairly reliable? I do. You question the quail house angle, correct? I place no confidence in that angle from the quail, house, quail pen. Explain for the jury, and you observed the defense expert last week talking about this, how did they come to determine based on these lines and where these people, where these gray figures are placed, how did they come to determine their height? Some days they show the exhibits. We'll Some days they don't, I don't know why. In a moment, but just explain for them how the defense expert got to that decision. The how defense he said he expert did. said he tried plugging in different heights and he had to place those, those animated figures on a plane, that, that line, that laser line, and he determined that they go back and forth on that plane to achieve the defects that are documented by the original crime scene examiner. Doug, go to page 51 real quick. Let's see if that's the... So they, I think this will probably be the state's last so, witness ending with the rebuttal with regard to the defense here on presumption the you see them? that a six foot four shooter could and not be the shooter. what do those yellow placards represent? Cartridge cases that were found on the ground. They're markers, so you know once you find the cartridge cases, they, you put them there for documentation purposes, photography, and sketching purposes. And why, explain to the jury what the, def the defense has determined that fact, their angle fact, is based Emily started it. on the on those static lines, those green lines, correct? That is correct, back and forth on that one static line for one angle and one static line for the other angle. And they've placed them right there at that particular location, why? I think the defense expert uh, was taking into consideration the location of the cartridge cases and he was showing how it would fit those five foot two animated figures that he placed in that presentation. Is it your understanding, and I'll, I'll demonstrate, the gray figures are holding the firearm, and those gray lines represent like a string. They would run up and down, correct? Yes, sir, that was the testimony. You go back and forth on this, on this green line. Okay, and that they would be right here because this is where the shell casings are. The shell casings are ejecting, correct? That is how I understood his... What? This is my the question. I'll restate the question. Why would they be placed right they there? They asked you to restate the question. I'm glad you're restating the question. Line. Huh. Because they were in proximity to some of the shell casings. Okay. Can you explain for this jury why their assumptions on the I map they did somebody are incorrect in determining ah, well, that the shooter had to be between 5'2 and 5'4? Well, there's a, there's a bunch of variables. Variables do matter. There are a bunch that you would have to consider. You, first, you'd have to consider this to be a static crime scene. Very it's little not. movement, and when it is movement, it's, it's controlled not. movement. Second, you it's would have to that. place some confidence in that angle of impact on that cardboard. Third, as I testified in my previous uh, testimony, 
we're not able to test fire or with confidence what we know to be the weapon used in this situation with the same ammo. And they don't throw the ammo the same place every time. It may be in the general vicinity, but it, as I said, I believe in my previous testimony, if you knew exactly where it was going to throw that cartridge case, you could carry a bucket with you and sit that bucket and all your cartridge cases would go in the bucket. But like we see in the sketch and in the animated drawing, those cartridge cases are, are throughout. They're, they're in a you know, pretty large little area. And what I also saw that I noticed from this CAD drawing is there's cartridge cases to the left of these animated shooters, which means that sometime at least two of these shots were fired with the shooter far to the left and not, uh, not on this static green line. Could you come down here real quick and point out what you're talking about as it relates to the location of the shell casing? Yes, sir. <clears throat> I'm not sure if this is a shell casing here, Mr. Wilson, but right here, that is a shell casing, and it would not eject this direction in any situation all the attorneys have leaned in i find myself leaning in it's not a left-handed nobody's ever testified it was a left-handed ar-15 and like i said they're there's kind no of evidence of that common and there's if no it evidence is, either way and that's a left-handed then we couldn't explain the majority of them being to the right so that's fair so that's, that's a reason why it wouldn't be the static little, line flaw. It wouldn't be a left Thank eject you. or yeah, another photograph a left handed to see a, a larger area AR. of cartridge cases back here Thank you. Let's assume for a minute. And this is the defense exhibit correct. that's not sealed. We've seen and that. Well, could be correct. They could be. Why is the defense's theory as to the height of the shooter represented in this picture still wrong? What else could affect it? Distance and height. Would you like to take a moment to demonstrate for the jury what you're talking about? Weapon position. Yes, sir. You, will you tell me which angle you'd like me to demonstrate first? Well, let me ask you this question before you step down. Can a person be, be in, in a, in a, on their knee and get the same angle and be standing and get the same angle? Yes, sir. Can, can a six foot four person and a five foot four person still shoot the same angle, just at different distances? Absolutely. Can you demonstrate for the jury why that is one way that this could have changed their math? I can. Please. It's good testimony. I mean, it really is. I think it's. I believe Doug great. does the tech it's for the court. Inches. I used to be 5'11, but as I get older, I'm about 5'10. <laughs> but if I'm here, or I could be 5'8 or 5'2", or 5'4". Here I'm 5'10". Here I'm 6'6". Six, six. And here I'm even over 7 foot, and I've still got the same angle. I have just added a little bit of distance to it. And as it's far as the quail pin I think. angle, I'm 21 inches from the floor to my knee. I measured it. I believe it was testified that the defendant is 25 inches between the floor and his knee. So there's four and a half to five inches difference in our heights. Here, I'm probably at 410 if I'm shouldering this weapon. I'm glad that and, he's using a rod. I, I don't know the mechanics or how it got this way. I'm just saying it's possible. Instead of an actual Here, weapon. I'm at 39, 38 and some change. Thanks for responsible or I can rotting. either take it lower or higher. And please don't ask me to demonstrate that twice because <laughs> I don't think my knees can do it again. I think I heard him crack. Yeah. <laughs> But that takes me to 36 inches, 37 inches. With the defendant, it would be about 39. So it's definitely possible. Even from a shoulder weapon, it's possible. And we do not know how the weapon was being held. I felt that when he's like, please don't make my knees do that again. For I what felt that. In this crime scene, was Maggie moving at the time she was shot? This was a very dynamic crime scene. I believe everything was moving. The victims and That's the really suspect were moving. And how do you know that? 
Well, suspect would be the different firearms evidence, the cartridge cases. Like I said, there's no absolute. They're not going to throw them the exact same spot, but they will throw them in a similar direction. We've got cartridge cases in a, in a pretty nice sized perimeter. We've got them at different locations from where Miss Maggie Murdoch's body, the final resting place, and different angles and different positions in different directions. So that tells you it's very fluid and it's very dynamic. So if I'm holding a gun and I'm moving and shooting, what is happening with those shell cases as I move? They are moving as they're ejected. When where was Maggie's head pointing when she hit the ground? Miss Maggie Murdoch's head was pointed in the direction of, of Paul Murdoch, where his body rested, back toward the feed room. What is your opinion of the defense's expert that says the shooter could not have been six feet, four inches tall like the defendant Alec like, Murdoch? Well, I don't agree with that at all. I think that's a flawed opinion. Could it have been a six foot four person? It could have been a five four, six four, or in my opinion, a seven four, as I just demonstrated. The height is not the issue. Doug, let's go to page 59. And I think he's done a really good exhibit job 140. showing the height is that not show an reflect issue. reflect states exhibit 57. I think this was a good. Dr. Good Kenzie, can you on. describe that picture for the jury? And I think it's made it a lot yes, more sir, clear. Or at least I think it's made it more clear. That is a shot from inside the feed room, that back window pane where the buckshot exited Paul's left arm and then continued and exited the feed room. Please go to page 67. Should be states 45, I believe. And what is that right there? That's a pink string from the window to a pine tree. And then go to page 69. And what is that a picture of? I don't know if it's the same pink string, but it's also a pink string coming out of a window. Okay. And go to page 74. And that, that is uh, labeled exhibit 54. And what is that a picture of? That's a picture of Mr. Sutton with what looks like a pump action shotgun pointed down into the feed room. And what do you notice about the angle that he's holding the shotgun and the angle of the string? I brought pretzels for the class. Well, the string is uh, parallel. Let me, let, me, let me correct you. I'm sorry. Let me re rephrase that. No, correct what your question. Don't correct him. Right here, represented in this picture. I've heard so many theories, but it, I really believe Mr. Sutton was trying to show that the angle wouldn't match if it was a taller shooter shooting into the feed room. Okay. Doug, I'm not quite sure what page it is, but I think it's two back. Uh, go back one more. There you go. That's uh, it's, it's the labeled Exhibit 53, and what is that a picture of? That's a picture of Mr. Sutton holding, I believe, the same shotgun, more parallel to the floor. And what is he trying to demonstrate in this photo? Can we see the exhibits, please? Every other day, we've got to see the exhibits. I believe he's trying exhibities. to uh, follow These are that. Not that pink string Sealed to that pine tree or, or whatever got him to that pine tree. Do you recall from his testimony how he got that angle? I how do, he found sir. Him? I do. Uh, Mr. Sutton testified that he got to where he believes Paul was standing and he got down and he peeped through the hole in the window, the one that he thought would match that corresponding defect in that pine tree, and he ran a string to that defect in that pine tree. Are they trying to determine the angle of the shot is exactly the way the shotgun's being pointed? Well, I believe they were trying to determine trajectory path of, of that projectile. What is flawed about this? Guys, with a, uh, with a rifle, you're talking about a single projectile, and, and most people understand the distinction. If you can find where it was fired and you can get a, a perfect impact, sometimes that'll give you an idea of the, of the path, the path of that projectile. With a shot shell, you're talking about nine, 12, or 16. In this case, nine. They just shot kind of guns. go. They're packed in a shot shell with filler, uh, like a styrofoam material. They're packed in a shot shell. When 
that cartridge, the primer of that cartridge is ignited and those pellets exit the muzzle of that firearm, they start to spread. We've heard a lot of testimony about that. They start to spread. And they spread in a cone. Okay, you got some at the top, some bottom, some left, and some right. And, and the, the more the distance becomes, the greater they, they spread. So in a They're cone. not like a mother duck with the ducklings right behind it and all the buckshot are in line. So you can't get a true trajectory on this shotgun. You can't even measure a true pattern, not even close to a pattern, with one pellet. Well, that makes sense. So it's my opinion that that pellet that definitely impacted that pine tree, that's the top of the cone. So you've still got a bottom and you've got two sides of that cone, and unfortunately none of those pellets were located. Well, some of them are in the victim as the problem. So, in your professional opinion, oh, can Jim you Griffin is going to be doing this cross chat. He's already been objecting, like Alec Murdoch, or anyone for that matter, at that height, from shooting that shotgun at that angle. Absolutely not. When the defense expert says that the shooter has to be between five two and five four, do you disagree with that? I do disagree with that. Wholeheartedly. With what degree of certainty do you think they're wrong in their conclusion? He already said 100 percent. I just think sir. it's an unknown. I, I don't. I mean, there's many more variables you have to know. How the shooter was holding the gun, you know, how his proportion to legs matches up with body. I mean, that's something that we're all a little bit different. And I don't. Unless you've got a video of that or someone tells you how they held a weapon, I, I think the notion that being able to look at this evidence and determine that is unscientific. You said something that is a good again. answer. You said there's so much we can't know. You you can know where the gun could is. Could the shooter have been running laterally? Certainly he could have. Could the shooter have been running toward Maggie? Certainly. Maggie was certainly moving. Correct? In my opinion, she was. You can't be running in on could your knees, though. Could the shooter though. have been on their knees? Could have been. But there's no way to know for sure, correct? That's an unknown. Yes, sir. And because there's so many unknowns, there is no way the defense expert can definitively exclude a six foot four person from shooting the rifle it's a and the shotgun, question. correct? The defense. It's leading, but it's a good question. <laughs> uh, can I In your opinion, can the defense, based you can ask on. ask for an opinion. What you just testified is Matter to sleeping while his boss is working? From being the shooter. And I don't either no. way. In my opinion, no. The defense witness is relying on math, an absolute, and in crime scene investigation, sometimes there are no absolutes. That's fair. Dr. Kinsey, have you ever observed a contact wound to the head by a shotgun? Yes, sir, I have. How many times have you observed a contact wound to the head by a shotgun? After the fact, I've seen several dozen, maybe three dozen, but I also had a gentleman that uh, committed suicide in front of me, probably from me to you. Holy shit. How many times have you actually seen either photos of a contact wound to the back of the head with a shotgun in your professional career? Probably a dozen. Uh, out of that three dozen, probably 24 of them were suicides or someone taking their own life, probably a dozen execution killings. Can you describe for the jury what kind of trauma a face, and I know they've heard from a pathologist, but in your experience as a, an expert in crime scene forensics, can you describe the kind of trauma you have observed in your career with, with contact wounds to the back of the head or any part of the head? Yes, sir, I have. Uh, sir, do you like your specifically to the face. Generally speaking, whether it be a, a shotgun or a large caliber handgun, the result is similar. You feel as though oh. the, the forehead and the facial features have went away. Yeah. And that's a kind way to put it. They're actually there, uh, but they have been, they've been shredded and the pathologist can actually put those features back in place, or the majority of it. But looking at it, it looks like from the teeth up, the person went away. It's just a mess. 
Dr. Kinsey, I would like to show you what's been marked as State's Exhibit 486. <clears throat> Can you look at that? You this is, I think, the most needed testimony of their rebuttal case because it rebuts the defense expert saying this could not, the defense expert said this could yes, not sir, have been Alec Murdoch. And what is the picture of? And he's saying you cannot Paul say Murdoch that. At autopsy. And what part of Paul Murdoch is, Murdoch is it a picture of? His face and his forehead. Do. Does his face look like it suffered the kind of trauma you have observed in the past from a contact gunshot wound to the back of the head or any part of the head? No, sir. Other than some red features from, you know, falling on the cement after the uh, fatal shot and some blotching to his skin, his face looks fairly normal uh, to have gone through what he suffered. And I'm not going to publish. No, it's not on the monitor. I think people are tired of seeing it, but I do need for you to describe what kind of things you've observed with the eyes and the bones with with people that you've seen that have been struck or shot in the back of the head at point blank range yes sir well it's not always the back now i've seen some from the side also from but yes sir generally like i said it looks like the facial facial features have gone away or they've at least changed drastically a lot of times you will get large blood pockets or contusions under the eyes if the eyes don't pop out a lot of times the eyes will pop out and they'll be on what's left of the cheeks. The facial bones, you can grab them with, your, with a gloved hand and you can move them around. Uh, and you will actually have pellet exits in the skin flap. If you pull the skin up, you can see where the pellets, whether they be buckshot or close distance birdshot, you can see the actual defects from those pellets. In the skin. Based on your training and your mini years of law enforcement He's experience. done 800 death scenes. Are the wounds suffered to Paul the back of the head consistent with a contact shot to the back? Absolutely not, in my opinion. Okay, Dr. Kinsey, we'll move on from that for just a second. Uh, no, you, forever, You were please. here yesterday, correct? I was. Uh, did you have the opportunity to observe, I want to say his name correctly, I believe it was Tim Pombach? I did. He was a crime scene investigator who was qualified as an expert for the defense. Isn't that right? Yes, sir. Okay. I would, uh, he, he came up with two significant conclusions, you could say three, about how Paul was shot at the feed room. And could this you, is why law enforcement need therapy. The big one that I recall is that Paul was shot so in the back of the head with a contact wound. First responder. And the other trauma. one, well, uh, the, the strikes in my mind, I don't know, it, the shooter passed him and shot him from inside the feed room. Those are the two big ones that I recall. There was another one regarding the number of people there. Was there? Oh, the thing about two shooters. Yes, sir. Okay. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, I would like to. Doug, can you get the Elmo up? Um, I've seen a lot of questions in the chat. Why this? Um, why this attorney is doing this question? And we'll talk about that at the break. Um, it's just. Wait, what's that a picture of? That's a picture of, of that expert uh, with his hands cupped opposite the hinges on the door, the door frame. Okay. I want to leave this picture up for a moment because what is the direction that the picture was taken from? From inside the feed room. Facing what direction? Outside the feed room. Okay. Now, you had an opportunity to hear the defense's theory on how Paul was shot, correct? Yes, sir, I did. I would like to demonstrate that with you right now. Yes, sir. Can you walk us through the defense's theory as you understood it to be? Yes, sir. I can. Your Honor, um, for purposes of this demonstration, I don't know if the court would allow it, but it'd be nice if we could open this door. I want to make sure that there's security here, but if we could have that door open just for a minute or two. I mean, use the door if you've got Thank it. You, Your Honor. They've used the door before, and I think they've done a really good job using the door as a demonstrative. I appreciate that he's using a rod 
to do the demonstratives, not a gun. Um, we've seen a lot of guns waved around in this courtroom in a variety of ways. Security is now in the hallway. Super Black Eagle oh, three shotgun, nope. 12 gauge. Withdrawn, withdrawn. We'll use this for the demonstration, so step down. Okay. A reenactment in court, I think, could be very helpful, especially knowing that the jury is going to go do a jury view. I know I spoke now, way too soon. I spoke way too soon. The room door? It's a couple inches wider than the feed room door. And of course, the feed room door doesn't have this, you know, this inset, correct? That is correct. So this is not exactly a, a replication of what happened at the feed room The jury door, no, sir, doesn't not. know they're going to get to see it The door it yet. swings the same direction, though. I don't now, think they've told them they're doing a jury view. I'm very careful about muzzle velocity. I'm obviously me, muzzle awareness. But you've given me permission to point this at you, correct? Uh, I have. Okay. What? You actually asked me to, correct? Yes, sir, I did. All right. So go in there and stand a couple of feet back. It doesn't have to be five feet. But you have since testified that Paul was five feet inside the feed room, correct? Can we demonstrate the first shot out here? I, I am. I believe they All right, stand back a little bit because you've yes, got to stumble toward me. Yes, sir. So I'm going to point like I'm pointing at you. Yes, sir. Okay. Paul was shot. Mm -hmm. Where's the shooter approximately outside the door? The reach phase for the ejection port of the shotgun is just. He did ask. The they have permission. Okay, Paul they has just been shot. Do this. Yes, sir. And then in, 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 in the defense's theory, what walk you tell me what to do and you you act this out and i'm gonna do what you tell me to do based on the defense's theory of the case the defense okay boss agreed with the assessment that paul stood there for a moment bleeding down his injured left arm everyone agreed with slowly that slowly walked toward the door okay and what does the shooter do the shooter's coming in the door and then what does the shooter do he shoots paul in the back of the head after he passes him okay and then shoots Paul in the back of the head like this. And where does the blood spatter go? Uh, the blood spatter, the pellet defects. Good demonstrative. And one that I didn't know about. And he isn't actually pointing it directly at the witness, which I appreciate. Was in the door frame at the top of the door. Now I understand this is a little different than the feed room door. Huh. That's the best we can do. So what did you find odd the about? The feed room door is narrower. First of all. I think the theory is preposterous, in my opinion. He thinks it's preposterous. Can you, can you walk me through why you think it's preposterous? Absolutely. Number one, that dry lock number two shot shell. It's very helpful. Fires a projectile at 1,450 yes, the jury feet can per see second. It. That was it very helpful. Of that weapon. As was mentioned, that's a millisecond. That's fast. To think that the pressure from flesh and bone will cause that pellet, those steel pellets now, we're not talking about lead. Lead's a little bit more giving. Lead will, is malleable. It, it, it will crush or flatten. We're talking about steel, BB pellets. They will turn around because of the pressure, go back the opposite direction, 180 degree direction at enough velocity to dent a steel exterior door and embed in the door frame. That doesn't happen. That doesn't happen. Floor said, why did we wait six weeks for this? I don't know. In my opinion. So the jury won't forget it? Because they wanted to wait to rebut the defense witness? Earlier, but can you talk about- Because if they did it before, then the defense right. witness would and have an answer add, for it. Please and the defense do. doesn't also, get to answer this. There's no defects to the OSB or the T111 siding in the bottom of the room. All right, wait, wait a second. You said a lot right there. Yes, yep. TS what? TS 111. It's like a, a exterior paneling that people put on their buildings. That's, that's what's on the building. The, For all the, us city boys, we appreciate you describing that. Thank you. Yes, sir. It, it's a whole weather paneling. Uh, there's no defects at the bottom. And if that theory is correct, if this is an entrance and this is an exit, the shot still had to go somewhere. There's no defects down there on anything. The door frame, as I mentioned in my previous testimony, the door frame has a clean void. That would be perfectly in line with, with those shots being there. from that shot shell. There's no cracks, chips, pellet holes in the cement. Clean There's plywood. nothing in the OSB. That's cheap plywood. That's man-made plywood. There's no defects in the plywood. There's no high-velocity blood spatter on the floor. What was pointed out to you is medium velocity, and that's from coming out of the wound and gravity bringing it down to the floor. 
you would see a pattern on the floor just like what you can see in the photographs at the top of that door. None of that's there. So I have to look at the science and I have to look at, at inertia and I have to look at that shot shell and how fast that shell is propelled out of that barrel and I know that it can't turn around 180 degrees and go back the other direction. It's not like blood and tissue. We're talking about steel, steel are, pellets. That's a Dr. Good point. Kinsey, are there studies on percentages of blowback when you're shooting into someone? There are. And based on your expert opinion, what percentage of blowback would come back at a shooter if they were able to shoot at that angle? Well, I don't think there's any definite but what I read is eight to ten percent, uh, except in you know, like I said, it's it's not an absolute every time, but eight to ten percent. Remember, the most of your force is going out the front of the barrel. And a moment ago, you were just talking about the defects and all of the trauma that would have happened to the paneling and the floor. Can you point on this photo with the dial stick behind you for the jury? I just want them to see in this photo. right here. The void, as, as I documented in my original testimony, the void was from here down, other than one stray satellite drop of blood, that was fairly clean. Uh, the void here, is where the shooter right would have, uh, but there's no the shooter here. would have gotten the There's no defects in blood that cement have you on him There's no defects in the inside cement and none in this OSB That's the void. Right here. And, and that was still there when I did the tour. They ripped out all the shelving and some of the insulation, but this was still there. This is when I talked about the state needing clear evidence. Dr. Kinsey, you may have covered this a little bit. This is clear Can evidence. Explain for the jury. It's easy to follow. If someone is shooting down, as we just demonstrated a moment ago here in the doorway, I'm gonna ask you all. Out, the shooter pull. is shooting down. How do pellets get embedded into the door frame up here? How is that possible? I think it's impossible myself. Uh, it, physics don't work that way unless you're shooting into a trampoline or a huge piece of steel and then you may have a pellet deflected back on you. It happens many times, especially when we're shooting steel targets, but not at that velocity. It will not sink into the door frame and it definitely will not dent that door with what I documented, in my opinion. What is the, restate for this jury what the defense's theory based on that blowback that would have exploded into the shooter's face here behind Paul. Ex explain for this jury what the defense's theory is about how that shooter would have been injured. The defense expert testified that that shooter would be most probably incapacitated from blood, bone, and body fluid. That's what they said. And it was a high likelihood that he was injured by those pellets. Dr. Kinsey, in your expert opinion, is there anything awkward about a shooter standing outside going into an enclosed area to turn around to shoot someone from enclosed? Is there something weird about that to you? I can't figure out the methodology of a shooter. I, I've, I've never... Uh, done any crime like that, Mr. Wilson, but I don't see, uh, if we talk about common sense and everybody's mentioned the totality when they don't have an answer for something, it's always, I looked at the totality, but I don't see any reason for someone to go squeeze up past one victim in this doorway to go inside to shoot him back out. And if he did, if that scenario did happen, that doesn't explain all the pellets that are in the floor of the feed room that we've testified, heard testimony to, as to why law enforcement didn't clean those pellets up. If it happened the way the defense expert says those pellets would be out here in the yard, they would not be inside that feed room. That is a clear explanation. Dr. Kinsey, you have a chance to review the case file on this particular case and observe the defense testimony from last week? It's two separate things. Yes, sir, I have reviewed our case file all crime scene or what I felt was crime scene related evidence. I didn't look into the videos and a lot of that other stuff. And I have uh, witnessed the testimony of the defense experts. Are you familiar with what the investigation has determined about the tool marks 
found on the 300 blackout shells found around Maggie's body, and the two marks found on the, three, the weathered 300 blackout shells found way up by the house in the flower bed. Are you familiar with that? I am familiar. And what do you know about that? The examination of our case is going into completely new information. Their ballistic experts already testified. We didn't present a ballistic expert, and they now didn't? they're parading him as a ballistic expert. Your response? Your Honor, their expert said yesterday, about an hour and nine minutes into their testimony, so. that it would be impractical for one shooter to bring in two long guns. It has always been the state's theory that the shooter owned both guns and had them on him. So we're rebutting what the defense expert said. The objection overruled. And that's going to whether these were family please guns. Please answer the question, Mr. 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 Or Wilson, not. Please. Are you familiar with what the investigation has determined about the 300 blackout shells found around Maggie's body and the 300 blackout shells found up by the flower bed that were, uh, appeared to be several months old and weathered? What, is, what, what uh, relationship do the shells have to each other? According to the firearms examination, those cartridge casings were loaded and ejected from the same weapon. So a family-owned weapon is what was used to kill Maggie. Well, that's the state's theory. That's leading. What do you infer from that information? <laughs> this leading. I would infer that this is a family-owned firearm. Or a firearm that's shot on the property regularly, I think is also a fair assumption on that. There was some testimony yesterday, Dr. Kinsey, about what well, it was from the defendant's brother, Mr. John Marvin Murdoch. And it related to the following day he came upon the crime scene. It had been cleared, and he saw how the crime scene was left. Can you explain? You've been in law enforcement for how many years? 30 years. Well, over 30, but 30 years getting paid. And you're the chief deputy at a sheriff's department? Yes, sir, Orangeburg County Sheriff's Office. Just to clarify some things, can you explain normally or traditionally how crime scenes are cleaned up for this jury? Is it the responsibility of law enforcement, in other words? No, sir. There are private companies that are contracted through SOVA. Well, it used to be SOVA. The name's changed now, and I'm sorry. What does SOVA stand for? Oh. It's Victims. State. It's the State Office of Victims Assistance. But it's now changed. I, I can't tell you what the new acronym is. But it works through our victims advocates, law enforcement victims advocates. Almost victims every department services. has them. And there's funding provided from taxpayer funds to work through your victims advocates. And you go out and you clean these crime scenes for the family so they don't bear the burden of cleaning those crime scenes. Law enforcement in particular I'm glad they cannot clean collect and dispose of and transport body sounds terrible, body parts or body fluids. That's something the coroner has to do because it's actually by permit through DHEC. But to make it easy on the family, these companies can collect those items. They're permitted. And then they will turn them over with a chain of custody or they will properly dispose of those items. Dr. Kinsey. I think that needed to be addressed with the jury because I think the jury is just going to want to know because it seems so callous that the families are trying to clean this up. A six foot four shooter cannot be excluded from the murder of Maggie and Paul. I see nothing that could exclude a six foot four shooter. In your expert opinion, can you tell this jury, is it right for the defense to say that there had to be two shooters based on the testimony you heard yesterday? In your expert opinion, can Can, two shoot, can you exclude two shooters? I cannot include or exclude two shooters. Can the defense include, to the exclusion of all other possibilities, two shooters? Absolutely not. Thank you, Court's indulgence. Please answer any questions the defense has for you. Okay. okay. Um, we'll talk about this being the lead AG when we get a break. I'll be interested to see Mr. Griffin's testimony. This feels like the clearest testimony from the state, very clearly presented, walked through, clearly presented and walked through 
why the defense expert cannot exclude Alec Murdoch from being a shooter here. The state has the burden of including him. Hey, Mr. Griffin. But I thought it was the most clearly the, um, presented testimony so far. Anyone who has a doctorate degree, I want to call a doctor. It's all right if I call you a doctor? I'll answer to anything you call me, Mr. Griffin. I understand. I appreciate that. He said that last now, time. Your degree, though, is in <clears throat> criminal justice. Is that correct? That is correct, yes, sir. You're not a doctor of pathology? But, Absolutely not. And you have no medical training? I have training in pathology of gunshot wounds. Yes, sir. I've attended several courses, classes, and seminars. It was also included in the uh, criteria like, but I'm not for a the doctor. certifications I mentioned for the International Association for Identification. I think he has I've more medical training than coroner armpits. I've research on office, uh, police officer use of force cases and the injuries that result from therein. And your, your doctorate is in criminal justice, and I believe you're Dissertation research is in use of force and perceptions of public attitude held by police trainers? That what is was, correct. What was that? Well, with the current atmosphere or what's been going on the last five or six years in our country, I was just trying to help. Uh, I wanted to figure out something that would assist with, because we've seen some law enforcement officers do some terrible things on video. Uh, we've also, uh, we've got a segment of our society uh, the minority segment of our population, a, a lot of those uh, citizens are in fear of law enforcement. And I wanted to study if the media perception as held by the three types of law enforcement trainers, if the media, the media perception and the way they portray law enforcement, if that affected the way we train our officers, if we're too hypervigilant, or if we, you know, we tell them, look, there's death waiting for you around every corner. Is that going to make law enforcement more prone to use force or more or use less force or, or those kind of criteria? And that's what I was interested in. I was laying the groundwork with a scientific quantitative study to allow someone to come behind me and and and, and do some further research just to expand that topic. Right. He wanted to try to the, fix uh, it. <clears throat> But you've said you also have done some gunshot wound training as part of some certification? Yes, sir. The IAI, as I mentioned, I was formally certified two different times. I think it's a five-year certification. And okay. I did let it lapse the, uh, in 2015 because that's when I started my Ph.D. and I couldn't study for both. But that is an extensive I mean, that's process right where you do research and you, are, you have to do a written test and then with my proficiencies uh, throughout SLED and then I still do some with our sheriff's office now where you have to pass proficiency and that is practical examinations, uh, testing and that kind of thing. Okay. Now in this case that the state did have a pathologist, Dr. Reamer, correct? Yes, sir, they did. And, and you uh, reviewed her autopsy report as part of your work, correct? Not so much as reviewed her report, but I went and spoke with her in, in Charleston at her office. Well, did you review her report? I have access to her report, Mr. Griffin. I can't tell you. I looked through the whole report. And you understood that her opinion was it, it was a shoulder shot. He's like, I'd like to talk to her the, uh, versus read the report, which makes sense. Up out of the top of the head. Is that correct? Yes, sir. I believe we agreed on that. Yes, and, sir. And, and your <clears throat> reconstruction opinion is that's the exact same angle that Paul was shot by the shooter. Shoulder, neck, out the top of the head. Yes, sir, but I didn't just rely on her information. I also looked at the crime scene photographs and I went to the scene myself. I understand. Yes, sir. But, and, and then you, did you hear Dr. Eisenstadt, his testimony? I did. Now, you worked with SLED, did you not? I did, yes, sir. Dr. Eisenstadt worked for GBI, correct? Yes, sir. SLED does not have its own in-house uh, division of medical examiners, do they? No, sir. There are several fine medical examiners throughout the state. I've done autopsies in a lot of the bigger cities in South Carolina. Um, Dr. Eisenstadt Why would SLED have their own the coroners, though? Examiner. Then he would generally use GBI, the ones in each correct? locality. That's what he testified to. I don't know that doctor. You, you didn't know of him before this case? I did not, no, okay. sir. Um, now he says his opinion is it was a gunshot wound 
contact to the back of the head. Is that correct? That is what he testified to. Yes, sir. And if that is, and if he is correct, then your opinion is incorrect. Is that right? I don't share the same opinion as that doctor. But yes, if he would be correct, that would make me incorrect. Okay. Now, in your um, training, are you familiar with Dr. Excuse me, Mr. De DeMeo's book on gunshot wounds. I have read DeMeo. Uh, I've heard it described as the Bible. I don't consider, no do my cohorts consider that as the gunshot Bible. There's four or five different versions out. There's one called Terminal Ballistics by Dobb, and there's also one Gunshot Wounds by He's Doherty, like and those are the ones that I'm more familiar with. Let but me I'm, tell I'm you not about saying literature. it's a bad textbook, and I'm not saying that the information in it's not correct. Okay. Now, um, and, and we'll literature, sir. You want to talk about the literature? In a moment. Look, the man what, what I'd like to do defended a is dissertation. Address. He's going to be familiar uh, with the Sutton's literature work that you had criticism of. Well, I didn't have criticisms. We just have diff different opinions. He's an engineer, and I'm a crime scene investigator, okay. Mr. Griffin. Well, I, I just well, it seems like you said that the angles of the um, in, to the quail pen were unreliable. Did Absolutely. Okay. And and. And, and I have you, several more criteria that I didn't mention earlier, but I mean, if you want me to go into those, I will. Well, I, I, I want to ask you first. What, Don't fight him on the literature, man. He's what's not going to get rattled. What's your understanding as to how those uh, measurements were taken? Who, well, first, who took those measurements in the quail pen? The original angles were the original sled crime scene agent that responded to the scene, right? And took those angles. And and you you understand that Mr. Sutton relied upon Agent Worley's measurements? I do. Okay. I do. Now now you were putting a dial shoving it in a box and taking it out of the box as if Mr. Sutton went back and, and tried to remeasure it. No, sir, that's not what I was insinuating. I said when the original agent removed her dowel, it wasn't it nefarious, but depending on how she removed that dowel, she could have altered that impact. So that remeasuring well, let's, it. Let's take a look at that, Doug, and this is uh, states, excuse me, defendants exhibit So that remeasuring it and isn't going to help. Can you pull that up? The, uh, the, yeah, the, the one you were showing with with the state. Excuse me. Um, just go to the uh, second slide to start with. There you go. So you understood from this exhibit that <clears throat> Mr. Sutton relies solely on the shot trajectories measured by Agent Yeah, the Ward. way he says quail pen. As I pen, said, it wasn't his intention, like Mr. Quill Griffin. It me. was his results that I disagree with. It's not absolute. And he gave, an, in my opinion, an absolute opinion to this. Well, why, why would Special Agent Worley take measurements if, if someone were not, should not rely upon them? That's I can't question. answer that. You'd have to ask Special Agent Worley. But in my opinion, the direction, uh, even though she can't obtain a perfect angle of impact, or even if that weathered cardboard was damaged, it's not a good substance to depend on because it, it's, it's just not hardy enough. And she was showing direction. I'm not saying the direction's wrong. I'm just saying I wouldn't put confidence Reviewing this case or work in this case, pen. I would not put confidence in anything that that am angle of impact tells me because it's cardboard. And if she didn't All measure right. it, so then y'all would be like, why didn't she measure seven, it? I, I believe she I has to take the measurements, Jim, and then you determine um, what's the and best you recognize that as practices. Being one of her measurements. I do. Yes, sir. And do you think she took the dowel out? And then put it back in. She to, had to take the dial out. Put at this some point. Uh, measuring device. No, no, Mr. Griffin. I didn't say the angle. I said the angle of impact when he was talking about the bullet wipe, and, and that part. That's what I was referring to, and that's what I'm saying. That hole can be altered when you remove those dowel rods. That shows direction, but that direction, I don't place a lot of confidence in it because we have more cartridge casings and we have injuries on Miss Maggie Murdoch. We don't know if this bullet struck Miss Maggie Murdoch. 
If it struck anyone else, we don't know that the uh, defect in that doghouse struck Miss Maggie Murdoch. Those are unknowns that we don't know. So all this proves to me is that the shooter was moving and more than likely Miss Maggie Murdoch was moving. All right, hang on. So Doug, if you'll back up one to number six. And I think that's so, fair to explain his answer. Are, are you okay. suggesting that this photograph, number six, taken by Sled, Agent Worley, that that was taken after the dowel was removed or before the dowel was put in? He said I don't know. Uh, right. That's what I'm telling you. I don't know how it was altered when she removed the dowel. I wouldn't place confidence in this before inserting the dowel because it's paper. It's not, it's not something hardy. Well, would, would your opinions be different if you knew she took the picture first before inserting it the dowel? It would still be irrelevant except for direction because we know we had a moving shooter. We know we had a moving victim and we can't prove one way or the other whether the projectile that caused this defect struck Miss Maggie Murdoch. All right, so if you'll go to uh, slide eight. Okay. He's like, as I've Again, said, Again, this is Agent Worley's not measurements angle. of a dial in the hole. Is that correct? Same picture. Yes, sir. Dial in the hole. Well, let's go to number nine. It's a little closer. And it's a dial in the box. It's a dial in the quail pen. And is, is this measuring up and down or left and right? Horizontal or vertical? That is, that is up and down. Okay. And, and I wasn't going to mention this, but the actual protractor or level finder is backwards. It would be a much more confident Oh, angle dear. if How the is it flat edge was up against the substance but i wasn't going to bring that out he wasn't going to pick at it and you he, should bring it out sled did this not sled did that yes sir but i don't know what her intentions were like i said she could have just been trying to show direction i don't know that mr griffin well this i mean this is direction but it's up and down direction right yes sir it's, it's showing angle of impact also right and and if you had confidence in the angle of impact, you could do whether you're doing it with a ferro system or just, you know, the old fashioned way with some sort of colored twine. I mean, that's, it's a legitimate way to determine shot angles. I don't know what it would prove. Uh, and I've run it through my head a million times. I don't know what more it would prove other than you've got a moving victim, you've got a moving shooter, and that at some point in time, Miss Maggie Murdoch was over there in the vicinity of that quail pen. And we know that because uh, we identified that tire tread impression on her leg as being from that Polaris or another, Polar another tire just like it. Okay. So, so I know we that know already. she was in that area. So if you go to slide 12, please. Okay. Which is exhibit 70. But I think it's... So you, good that Jim you know is picking through. The, the Wouldn't shot it be angle through the quail pen also Jim is now having to defend I mean, what me, Sled the shed, did that wooden, because his experts relied uh, on Sled, which is an odd position for the defense wall, to find I mean, themselves in. Wall there, correct? I don't think I observed a photograph of the inside of the shed. I may have. This but is the quail I, I don't pen. Believe I ever observed that. Well, do you see number 12 going all the way through? This is the dowel that, that goes from the outside, the inside, and then on through. The back side of the quail pen. I see it being held up by the cardboard and the rabbit wire, but I don't know what's behind that cardboard. You're unaware that, that it actually went through the, the wood there. You didn't know that. I, I do not know. And, and like I said, I don't see what it would prove. Uh, I don't see any more that it, it would prove than you've got a moving suspect and a moving victim. Well, if the measurement it included going through uh, fixed wood siding, that would give you more confidence that the angle is accurate, would it not? Yes, sir, but the angle itself will prove no more for me than direction because what this proves to me is at some point in time, Miss Maggie Murdoch was close to this quail pen. If this shot is related, and I have no reason to believe it's not, and my shooter was moving, my victim was moving. I don't know forensically what else that can prove. Well. You can certainly measure the angle of the uh, bullet entrance to the quail pen and calculate backwards to see where that shot was fired from. You could, yes, sir. And that's what Mr. Sutton did, did he not? He did, and I, I never disagreed with his direction. I'm disagreeing with, with the his angle. Uh, 
final analysis or his final result that you can judge how tall a shooter is without knowing a whole lot of other variables. Right. Well, you understood that Mr. Sutton said that the gun, the barrel was somewhere on that line at some, to, to make the shot angle. Moving back and forth on that line. Yes, sir. Yeah. I heard his testimony. And, and that he picked a spot and said if you put the gun at a hip level, to get on that line, he used a 5-2 person as an example. That's Exclusively, it. yes, sir, I do. He said it had but to be he between. he did not say the person had to be 5-2. He said between 5-2 and 5-4, I mean, We all know he? it could be dynamic, a 5-8, 6-foot person can get low. What I gathered from his testimony is it was his opinion that only a person in that height range Chad, would, didn't could have he? fired that weapon. What do that you guys my think? Opinion. How do you remember well, it, Chad? His opinion was that it would be. He said, a "Of course, people can move." Four, but he said he thought it had to be between five two and for five four. To fire at that low of a level. And that's his, That's the. That's the part I disagree with. I, I don't know how Mr. Sutton could publish an opinion about what's natural or unnatural. Well, if it's someone six four and the and the. Chet, you guys are remembering it the way I remember it. The muzzle it. of the gun is well, on cross. Being he was asked, "Couldn't somebody be on his knees?" And he said, "Yes." The but I mean, the six-four person who's got to get down on the ground or hold it down below their knees. Isn't that correct? I he have did demonstrated say that. several different ways, depending on distance and height, that a shooter can shoot. Any, we don't know. We don't have a video of it, Mr. Griffin. Right. He but did say there were some angles that didn't fit Mr. because Sutton's then the gun would have to be below the ground, which makes perfect sense. I'm, those are things that can I be think proven. I'm, what I'm hearing you now is you don't have a real dispute to his methodology. He's an engineer. Yes, okay. sir. Okay. Um, what you dispute is the accuracy of the angle coming out of the quail pen because of the construction being uh, cardboard. Is that right? Yes, sir. I, was, I said that if I was investigating that and even reviewing that case as a consult, I wish I put little or no confidence. I wish the prosecution would have hammered more on. Of of okay, argument. so now it doesn't have to be someone five two or five four instead of making jokes okay. about twelve year olds. Well, I really wish they. Let's see if we can. I really wish they would have focused on that because they said, "Oh, so some five two eleven year old vigilante." Instead of fair saying, amount of confidence." So he could have been the, here. He could have been here. He could have been there. At least you one of know. the angles coming out of. Out of the quail pen. I think that might right, have been more effective, right. especially knowing the he's direction. coming up the yes, rebuttal. The direction. Mm -hmm. So that's um. So. Take a look at that right quick. <sighs> and. It just would have been a, I think, a better cross of that witness, or maybe the jury remembers the five foot two vigilante eleven year olds. I don't Doug, know. If you'll go to. Um, um, Please go to the jury room. Please do not discuss the case. If you pause too long with this judge, he's going to take the afternoon break. And he just did. So the, the gym was pausing, getting ready to go to the next exhibit. And the jury has taken the afternoon break. We're going to take a chat about what we're watching in just a sec. Uh, yeah. So. I'm going to wait and see if the, uh, I'm going to wait and see what the court has to say. And then we'll answer some questions. Don't forget to do the YouTube things. Court reporter needs a break. We'll take 15 minutes. Perfect. Court reporter is taking 15 minutes. I, I'm sure after this morning, the court reporter is exhausted. Um, there was a lot of rapid fire. And I've not seen this. Either of the court reporters ask the attorneys to slow down ever, which is, I, I mean, maybe once in this trial, maybe not. But we got to talk about the fact that the bossy boss state AG um, is the one who's doing this cross-examination. It's just an unusual thing. I don't know why the bossy boss has chosen to do it. And again, is that something that's unprecedented? No. In a lot of jurisdictions, the, you know, the AG or the, the elected DA they're still an active part of their office because there aren't enough people for them to not be. I worked in a large jurisdiction where the bosses, and there were tons of them, often weren't in court anymore. Um, and in some cases, 
never in the first place, which is odd to me too. Um, tech, uh, thank you, Tech. Is this the clearest evidence from the state so far? Yes, 90%. No, 9% with 10,000 um, with 10,000 votes. I do think it is clear. I think this attorney has been clear. Um, I wish I knew why he was ch he chose the last witness. It might just be because it's his office. It might be because he is a very, very popular attorney general. So is it unheard of? No. Is it odd for me that he didn't do more of the questioning? If he was going to be a part of this prosecution team, be a part of the prosecution team um, and be there throughout the entire trial. If if not, then not. So it seems um, it seems like an interesting choice to have him come in to do the last witness. They might have they might have chosen to do that from the beginning. I don't know. Um, they might have decided to do it last minute. I don't know. We won't know. I don't think he'll do closing, though. I don't think he can do closing. The jury has been listening to Creighton for so long, and Creighton did the opening. Normally, you're going to have the attorney that did the opening do the closing. They're the ones who've been there. They're the ones who have... Um, they're the ones who have built a rapport with the jury, et cetera. So I don't think we're going to see that. But I do think Kenzie's testimony is clear. It's rebutting the defense's theory of how this shooting went down. Is that going to help the jury put the gun in someone's hand? That depends on all the other evidence. Does this evidence put the gun in anybody's hand? No. But it rebuts, which exactly what rebuttal witnesses are supposed to do. It rebuts the expert from the defense saying there is no way this shooter could be 6'4". That's what the defense expert said. So I, the defense expert said, I can exclude Alec Murdoch as the shooter based on all of this. And this witness is saying, no, you can't. You can't exclude Alec Murdoch as the shooter. So that is, that is what this witness testimony is all about. It just, we have more context for it. I feel like the defense case has been more clear in a lot of parts. So this, after the defense's testimony, I feel like I had a more clear visual of how they're saying things went down. And now when this witness comes back around, it's like, oh, now I can visually see it. Because the state didn't do a very clear job of putting forward how they thought it happened. Also, the state, I think, hesitated to put forth how they thought it happened because they wanted the defense testimony to come out and then rebut it. But that leaves everybody very confused for six weeks and the jury might already be frustrated and be like, I'm done. I'm just done. So with that, let us go to some questions. I'm going to just swoop and we're going to get to some questions. The crime scene has changed so much. The building where Paul was killed no longer exists. How does the jury view solve anything? I have not heard that the, Oh, where did my screen go? I have not heard that the kennels no longer exist. Um, I have not heard that. If that's true, you would have thought that one of the attorneys would have brought it up. But the attorneys, the defense has had people out there not that long ago at the kennels taking photos. So I don't, I I don't know where Linda, I don't know where that information is coming from that the kennels aren't there. Um, I haven't seen anything that says the kennels are not still there, even in the listing photos of the house. Raise your hand if you broke your phone doing yeeting experiments. Don't do that. Don't break your phone doing yeeting experiments. Melody said, hey, from North Carolina, catching you live again. I need a work note, please. Yes, we're on jury duty. Law nerd jury duty. Lauren, can you please explain the motion from yesterday? Um, can they argue, can they charge uh, Murdoch with impersonation of law enforcement? Lauren, at the end of the morning video, I talked about the motions from yesterday with a jury view that's been granted, unless there's a different motion you're talking about. So that's at the end of the morning video when I answered that. Can they charge Alec Murdoch with impersonation of law enforcement? Not unless they have a specific instant where he did something beyond riding around with his, his badge in his car. I don't know if they need to charge him with anything else, but it seems they're going to keep doing it. They charged him with whatever misdemeanor for contraband but they would need an instant of him doing something beyond just having a badge on his dashboard and the blue lights. <clears throat> they would need something else. Debbie said, could the state charge him with murder and or participation? They didn't charge him in the alternative. Could they have charged him in the alternative? 
and given the jury other options to choose from and multiple theories, yes. Did they do that? No. So no, it's too late now. I mean, unless, no, at trial, I mean, if they tried to do like an information to conform to proof at this point, the defense would object. It's just too far down the road. Um, I started to watch another trial. The room is nice. The room is nice. No one has objected causes cause there's no leading questions. One lawyer objected to the form of the question. I started crying, yelling and cheered. Um, I'm not sure what trial that is, but Camille Vasquez Rando, their different trials have different vibes. Does the jury get offered trauma counseling? It depends on the jurisdiction. Um, very specifically depends on the jurisdiction. Um, Stina G said the white haired white shirt man over AM shoulder is Charlie Condon. The former AG of South Carolina been there the whole time. I, he has been there the whole time. Question, did the big boss put Creighton in timeout? I'm sure that there was a conversation. I'm sure that Creighton is not in timeout. Um, he wouldn't have been selected for this trial. Here's the thing with the bosses, though. In a long trial, if the bosses are breathing down the prosecution's team, the prosecution's team's necks, it can shift the theory of the case. That happened a lot in the OJ case, and it's it's interesting to see. You, you can see the swaying of it. So I hope the bosses have not interfered too much. Um, so I don't, I don't know if the bosses have interfered in that way. Katie said, if acquitted, can they charge him for different charge related to the same crime? No. Um, it's an interesting question with regard to conspiracy, but when, and I would need to look at more case law with regard to that, because the crime in conspiracy is the agreement, like the agreements, the crime, not the underlying crime, but they can't charge him of the murders in another way. If he's acquitted, that's double jeopardy. You can't twice be put in jeopardy for the same crime. A conspiracy is not the same crime. The crime in a conspiracy is the agreement to do the thing, not the underlying thing. Normally you see the conspiracy and the underlying thing charged together. Not always. Uh, this is the trial that never ends. It just goes on and on, my friends. <laughs> yes, it really has been. So thank you for the super chat on that. Could AM lies, blue lights push the jury to guilt? The lies definitely could push the jury towards guilt. He's lied about quite a lot of stuff, and I think there's an argument to be made. Just like there's an argument to be made about Maggie's phone and how did Maggie's phone get to where it got, and that doesn't make any sense at all. Um, how did these shootings go down? Those are hard to envision. But there's also an argument for how did he lie just about the small window of time when they were murdered? How would you know? And why would you lie? And the defense isn't arguing that he didn't do this, but he knew. They're not arguing that at all. So we've got we've got some some problems with that for the defense and for the state. Um, <laughs> Moo boy Moo said, "Emily, stop. We must be professional." No, there was a brief and in, there was an interlude in there when we all became the internet. Uh, 12 year olds that just needed to laugh about the dowel in the box, the rod in the box. He, he made a hole in the box and then he stuck a rod in the box and then he went into court and pulled the rod in and out of the box. Look, we needed a minute. Everyone needed a minute. Today's been a lot. Um, it feels like everyone is lying in this case. I came to a point that no one is credible. It feels like everyone is lying. Um, fair. And the jury may too. Um, just a man, his Dow rod and his demonstrative box. Thank you, Alec F. Um, I need Ron Fuchs just to reread his testimony and see if there is any difference in intonation. Um, okay. MKB said that is South Carolina's elected attorney general, Alan Wilson. I I'm so confused. Um, Hanny said, Oh God, narrowly avoided water everywhere. Sir, please put the rod down <laughs> off topic. Koberger PA search warrants unsealed. We will get to that another day for sure. Tomorrow we have a Emily Show podcast. If you haven't, the podcast is available where all your favorite podcasts are. Um, the Emily Show covers a lot of topics. Tomorrow we're covering the South Park lawsuit and some updates in the Rust case. Empowered Life Apparel and Coaching said, as long as it's not intentional, the rod in the box and the quail pen Sounds to me like putting three syllables in bed when I was little. Oh, the South. The quail, the way he says quail is pretty delightful. So many jokes in my head right now. Yep, we all, we all just. Um, 
why the AG of the state, Andy Samberg, would do. I, I, I think this is a very popular AG from what I've heard. So I'm not surprised that a very popular AG would show up at some point in the case. I wish he had been here more. Actually, his direct questions have been real direct. Emily, do AG do trials? It depends on the jurisdiction. If so, where was he for the last six weeks? That's the real question. Why now? Why this witness? Why at the end? If not to show the jury that their office is behind this case in its entirety. So it's a lot. Uh, Law Lumber said, are we going to get a South Carolina state senator versus a South Carolina attorney general in court because this trial couldn't get any more ludicrous? Poot has uh, removed himself from this one. Question, why wouldn't the state AG be the main prosecutor in this huge case? That's all inter-office politics. So I don't know. Um, Lauren said, the bangs are giving Dwight Schrute and I love it. I like this witness's drawl. Uh, Poke Metters with the dowel. He isn't moving. Metters, I think, fell asleep during his boss's examination. I think Metters has forgotten that his boss will be able to rewatch on TV. Though I will say, hold on. I saw this on Twitter. We're going to just go share. We're going to share the tweet tweet real quick. The, I can't really judge Metters too harshly on this because, hold on. I didn't notice the AG earlier this morning. There was a lot going on this morning. This morning was busy. But somebody clocked the AG in court on Twitter. Um, it was shared on Mandy Matney's Twitter, the Attorney General of South Carolina. Uh, Lizbeth on Twitter said, this guy is all of us. And he is... <laughs> so I really can't give Metters too hard of a time when, when this happened earlier, right? Can we just, can we give Metters a hard time after that? Where can I get the Rubbershams so my Dow snug in a box? I don't know don't know. So I feel like dry contacts, possibly we've heard about the pollen. Look, we've heard all about the pollen, but when you're on television, we've heard all about the pollen. Let's blame the pollen, but it's just funny. <laughs> it's just, there's a lot in this picture. It's like a seek and find. You got the, like, you've got the uh, computers being covered with paper and then the computers being like held together, not with tape, but with post-it notes. And then You've got Poot doing the questioning and the AG just literally pulling out his own uh, eyes. People trespassing over the weekend, taking selfies where Paul Murdoch died. Disgusting doing extra security for the jury visit. Amanda, that is what they said they are doing. Um, trespassing is is not, not the way to do it. Kimberly Creamer said, did you hear, did you all hear about Poot? Did y'all hear Poot about reviewing trial info on YouTube this morning? He said that he went and rewatched the testimony on the YouTube. And I'm not surprised he went and rewatched it. What's your opinion on Netflix dropping a series in the middle of the murder trial? Um, Angel Nikki, I talked about this yesterday a little bit. I, I am sure that Netflix had their date already set thinking the trial would be over. It was estimated at a three week trial. I think it's potentially problematic for the jurors. None of the attorneys made a deal about it. Nobody asked Netflix to delay it, it seems. So I don't know if there's much much to be done about it, but it's not ideal. Um, wish it had been delayed a little bit, but also they released it around the, they released it, I think, on the anniversary of Mallory Beach's death at the boat crash. And I can understand why they would want to do that too. If Netflix thought it was going to be the end of the trial, I can, I can get it and I can understand that. I don't know how long in advance it takes to set those schedules and how much it would have been hard for Netflix to push it back. And I don't, the jury's not supposed to watch it either way. So the AG has been sitting at the prosecutor's desk for many weeks. I have not seen him there. I seen, if he's been there the entire time, I have not seen him there. I'll go back and look. Um, Saw the AG at the end of the defense case, I believe he was in. So it might have been in the last few days. But I'll look. There's so many people at the prosecution table. Some days there's like 10, 11 people back there. It's wild. Um, Crystal said, don't know how this works, but do you think he came in because he's getting frustrated like all of us? I don't know what choice was made. It might be because he was always going to do this in rebuttal and he wanted to show the jury he's behind the case. It might be because he's popular. 
It might be because he was frustrated. It might just be because he wanted to be back in the courtroom and doing one important witness would have given him time uh, to do that, depending on how much how much he is um, in court and not in court. He's he's he seems like an attorney that is in court regularly and frequently. His questions were good. He was easy to follow. He clearly knows this case very well. So, I mean, he's not unfamiliar with this case by any means. So do I think it's a stunt? No, I, this is a very big case for them. So, um, Baxter said he's been there many days. So I'm talking to John Marvin. AJ has been there, um, after week one, I'll go back and look. So it is not, again, it's not my jurisdiction. So another person at the table doesn't necessarily stick out to me. Um, but I don't disbelieve Chad. Chad is bae. Reminder for those in the U.S. after hearing the graphic details, 988 uh, is the National uh, Self-Harm and Crisis Lifeline. There are words that YouTube hates the most, Jess, but thank you. It is hard testimony. I think it was necessary testimony from this witness. Um, Renee said he's going to prison anyway because of the financial crimes question, or is it? I don't I don't know. I couldn't parse that. Apologies. Have you ever had jurors or witnesses get sick from graphic evidence? Not get sick, but we've definitely taken breaks for people crying, um, which is not uncommon. Happens sometimes. Be seated. Question, if the jury hangs, can the prosecution retry under a different theory? It would be a mess if they did, but they could, in theory. I don't know if they would. Corey, congratulations on 703 subs. Thank you so much. Um, thank you for the coverage. You're welcome. The AG's brother co-owns a man You're manufacturer of Palmetto State Armory. We've heard a lot about Palmetto State Armory in this case. The judge is like, bring, bring the jury. All right. It's jury time, folks. Let's go ahead and make sure we're somewhere we can hear. Let's see. All right. Did Creighton know his boss would handle the cross? I think they would have discussed that at some point. Um, I need to know where you went for that vodka. From earlier today, um, Pork Belly Farmhouse is where we went for drinks. So, a little bit of a travel. I worried that the jury will come back. I worried about the jury come back as hung. What will happen if it becomes a hung jury? Then there is no results, and they have to decide to try it again or not. Um... T Max says, I checked Tinsley in court asking to freeze assets. He said AM has paid $8 million to lawyers, and that was a year ago. I will have to go look for that. I, $8 million is quite a lot. M Kirk says, You're getting me through a root canal. Good luck. Stay still. Kate Connolly said, If you look up the address on Google Maps, it does look like one building is gone in the satellite view. I don't know when those maps are taken. The kennels are there based on the listing. If the kennels aren't there, it will have oh, to be thank noted. Thank you, Mr. Griffin. The defense has been out there yes, sir. recently. So, is it possible Creighton feeling Kelly, overwhelmed? I'm still talking about the uh, quail mm, pen. So. You remember how tall off the ground that defect is? I do not from memory, Mr. Griffin. Um, he would have to look. If I would uh, show you Agent Wardley's report, um, take a look at it. We don't want to start any evidence somewhere, but if you could just tell the jury, it, and if that's consistent with, with your understanding of how high that defect is. Four foot two inches. I forgot yes. to share screen. Sorry, y'all. Um, and and did, you, did you That was me. When you were out there, did you inspect the, the entry in the quail pen or the damage to the shop behind the quail pen at all? I, I looked at all of it, but I did not run any angles. Okay. And, and did you ever talk to Agent Worley about her measurements? I did. Yes, sir. I did interview Agent Worley about her work on the scene. When was that? Uh, back the first or second week of December at the New Sled Laboratory. Okay. I can give you an exact date if I, I look back through my notes. I don't. I don't need that. Okay. But are, are you being compensated for your time? I am. Yes, sir. And and how much have you been paid thus far? And how much you 
hope to get paid before it's all said and done. Well, I'm a Baptist, so if I didn't charge something, my friends and family would talk bad about me. But uh, <laughs> my retainer is $2,500, and I have a flat $100 an hour rate. And when I added it up, 100? Uh, I was uh, up a little over 100 hours. But, 100? But, I ended my retainer myself without anyone asking me to do a little over a week and a half ago, and I'm now working off of a mutual aid agreement that my sheriff's allowing me to do that. Sheriff, a hundred dollars an so hour I'm not is low. Anything from a little bit before last week on. So a hundred hours, hundred dollars is that? That's low? roughly. Uh, I've spent. I have uh, expended. Roughly, not all of it was daytime, but if I take off, I have to use personal leave from work to, sure, to do right. this work. So roughly 75, 80 hours I have used of time from work. Okay. So you've made to work on this case. $7,500, $10,000? Well, I've spent way more than that running up and down the highways, Mr. Griffin. I've probably been to 20 meetings or so, but yes, sir, if you look at it that way. Okay. <clears throat> He's, no. he's big. No, it seems like he's basically doing it. But I will be going up next week. <laughs> Exhibit 140. And, and if you'll go to slide 31, please. He is um, I think it's not charging the yeah. state quite a lot. He might charge other experts more. So this is a. He <clears> might charge other and, and cases got, more. Let's just focus on the angle going in the quail pen. But Jim's going to ask, height everyone issue. should this ask. This is the angle. Do you have any disagreement with this angle? I don't. The only problem I have with it, I know there was a side-by-side -side there, and I don't see the side-by-side -side depicted on this photograph. So looking at it, I could not tell you how that would play into that angle. Okay. But and, and the, well, the quail pen's four feet. The defect in the quail pen's four feet, two inches off the ground, and... Um, and according to Agent Worley, the shot angle is rising either one degree or one and a half degrees or three degrees. Do you, is that consistent? That's, that's accurate. Yes, sir. Well, let me ask you, do you believe the shot angle is, is rising? I mean, you, you may not agree with that exa exact angle, but do you believe it's rising toward the quail pen? Well, I believe it could be. Yes, sir, I do. Do you believe it could be? A downward. I do not trajectory. believe looking at it that it could be downward. No, sir. So we can eliminate downward. Well, I, if you're going by my results, uh, I'm saying that I don't believe it's downward. Okay. And so if it's if it's going upward, and then you take that line back that we see, this line, at some point in time, it's going to go into the ground, will it not? It should. Yes, sir. And and do you know where that? terminal point is roughly i have no idea mr griffin as i said i know i've got a moving victim i know i've got a moving suspect okay. i know there's a lot of movement i don't see where that's worth 25 cent or a quarter one way or the other it gives me an idea that this is a fluid and dynamic crime scene okay. well it, if you had confidence in the vertical angle jillian the then, quail pen is on the other side from the you'd be panels. able to determine the under the depending on where along the, the way under the you would be able hanger. to determine the height of the muzzle of the gun if you had confidence closer in the to behind where maggie was well i'd have to know a bunch of unknowns also uh how the shooter is holding the gun how tall the shooter is the would distance you? did he move a shell case and did he not i mean i, I don't know those things and i'm not going to make them up no i mean would you have to know all those things to to know how high the muzzle is said. off the ground at any point along that line if you give me a fixed point and I knew that I had a strategic fixed position I was shooting, I could sure I could run a tape measure right. and know where they were at. And it doesn't matter whether it's a seven four, six four, four four person, the muzzle's gonna be at a fixed spot. Right? That's the way angles work, yes sir. Okay. Thank you. Now we will not on, get to see the jury go to the pharaoh, scene. There's really no way to do that without the, without pharaoh, the jury being streamed yes, and, it is the and shown. Of so no, we and won't. Scanning and getting measurements. It is the new thing. We use the sketch pad and a pencil, but I the do understand the, uh, the, the technical part of it. And, 
And would you agree with me that the feed room would be about right in here? Can you see that? <coughs> you, know, you want to come down and point out where the feed room would be at, on, on this angle? Oh. Excuse me, on, on this sparrow? And I'll give you a, I thought I would. Alec has a right to be there with the jury. I'm sure his attorneys will have him go and they will be with him too. Right. That will be right there the more difficult to coordinate. Yes. Okay. All right, thank you. Yes, sir. The jury will be accompanied by law enforcement and, and law enforcement will close down the property and most, probably close down the road. You know roughly how far? So there's no media out there either. This, this I would line, imagine. This angle would be away from the corner of that structure. Can I talk during the viewing? I have no. no idea, Mr. Griffin. You've not done that math? No, sir, and I saw no need to if all the shell casings are up here by the shed. Okay. <coughs> all right. Court reporters generally have a recording of the court that they'll play back. Didn't Alec Murdoch steal from Jim and Poot as well? Not that we've seen. I want the lady prosecutor who looks like a cyberpunk quest giver to give the closing argument. To, to I don't Paul think that's going to happen. I think it's going to be Creighton and, and the, his um, Creighton energy. And, and I guess the first, I'll, I want to talk about your analysis. We've been critical of, y'all have been critical of, um, Mr. Palmbach and um, Dr. Eisenstadt, but under your analysis, the shot of the gun was up to the left shoulder, jaw, and out the top of the head. Right? Yes, sir. That is my opinion. And you, um, I'm going to come up here, and, and this is the feed room door here. I just want to understand where you have we're going to Paul demonstrate your, again your analysis is, is paul on this side which shot Mr. Griffin? the the last shot the fatal shot yes sir. well as i mentioned in my report i would assume he's closer to this wall because i've got a void six inches below that light switch but Paul, if I'm you look at the outside photograph of that building there's a silver light cover on the wall and about six inches below that, I've got one stray satellite drop of blood, and then it's fairly clean. You've got some outliers, but it's fairly clean going down. Okay. So you think Paul is closer, and, and this would be the door and it's swung open, so you think Paul is closer to this side? Well, I think it would have to be Paul because the angle wouldn't match up if the shooter was here and Paul was over there. It wouldn't match up either way, whether it was down in the head or up in the head. It still wouldn't match up either way if Paul was against the hinge side of the door. And, and Paul was standing roughly how I'm standing? No, sir. As I demonstrated, well, we tried to demonstrate, me and Mr. Harfootley were kind of dancing up here. But I believe he come out with his head down, his, he's drooped on the left side, and he come out on this side with his shoulder just outside the room. And then the yes, shooter sir. was outside About the like frame that. down okay. low. Shooting and up. then the shooter is off outside the, the frame, Paul's left. down low, yes, sir. shooting yes, sir. up. Yes, sir. And, and the almost shooter in a lying in wait position. Shot done, right? Absolutely. And he is some low, two and a half feet away. Well, low, the barrel low, is two low. and a half feet away. That's what uh, Dr. Reamer said. Yes, sir. What do you say? I don't believe it was that far away. But I'm not, like I said in my earlier testimony, I'm not going to contradict a pathologist. She knows more about the human body than I do. All right. Um, I think you, you can get two and a half feet Dr. away. Well, because I've been to the scene and I've reviewed Perhaps. all this evidence. Yes, sir. That is correct. Okay. Well, that's, that's what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So if you it say, rolls. Let's say two and a half feet from the there's a end gap of the at the bottom of the door. Yes, that is. And, and there was testimony the about the ground the being angled up, so things um, would wash to hold the gun. And I, that's I guess what they you, said. So you it got it forty five degrees, right? Well, as mentioned. A dozen times so far. I don't know how long this shotgun is. Okay. Okay. But it would be here. And I don't know where he's standing, most probably behind this wall, because Paul is stumbling toward him. So here. So the shooter's shooting left handed, you think? I, well, I don't know if he's left or right handed, Mr. Griffin. Okay. He, I mean, he can I, hold I, it I on either side, part. Mr. Griffin. Right. But that angle would match up, despite all the uh, 
That matches up. Yes, sir, if that would match up. Now tell me, in that angle, and, and this dowel's a gun, where's that shot shell going if it ejects? If I'm pointing into the room, it could go inside the room. Well, <laughs> well you just How? raise it up to... I mean, that's uh, under your angle. But I'm behind the gun. I'm behind the gun, so that's going to push the weapon out a little bit. The uh, ejection port's on the right, so the shell could easily end up in that room. If Paul's standing there and, and, the, and the end of the muzzle is two and a half feet away? Yes, sir. You're saying could eject in the room? The, do at, the at, door is this wide. Yes, sir. Absolutely. At 45 degrees? Yes, sir. Okay. It's doable. Yes, sir. And then under... Okay. Your analysis. Your analysis. <laughs> your analysis. Oh, my analysis. Okay. I'm your sorry. analysis. Yes, sir. <laughs> We're not there. We're not there. The We're still in court. Audience is chuckling. The, uh, the shots going much up emptier in court today. Paul, Look at it. Chest, jaw, People out the done. top of his head. Yes, sir. Number two bird shot. Number two steel shot dry lock three inch. Yes, sir. And you um, counted. And I think you said 150, 156, I can't remember. Well, the literature says 156. I was like 150, but I kept getting tired of counting, and I think I kept messing up. So I'm going to say the literature is probably correct. Okay. And um, <laughs> I got tired of counting. I don't I know if there that's. some 60 to 70 that were found in, in his body, cold. at least. I have no reason to doubt that. No, sir. Okay. I didn't go one, two, three, four, and count them on the x-ray, but I, I, I believe that. Okay. And. Um, And Doug, if you'll pull up, please, uh, Defendant's Exhibit 188, which is in evidence. Oh, I don't want to do that one. Hang on. Let's do crime scene photos. Yeah, the urinalysis comment um, was funny, and you kind of heard the audience chuckle. The judges admonished them a couple times. Folks, uh, this is going to be a, a sealed exhibit, so please cover your monitors. I appreciate that he's being mindful with them. Yeah, he's a good, I really, I think this witness has been very clear. And, uh, this is um, Defendant's 193 as soon as we're ready. The jury is not taking notes. I don't know how they're doing so it, you tell us, but they're not. You recognize this photo? Yes, sir. That would make me um, crazy. And this is the door? Yes, sir. I couldn't and handle this it. this part of the, the door is, is, is blood spattered? Yes, sir, it is. And this, and th then there's hair? There is hair. There's a little bit of bone, and there's some other body tissue. Okay. And, and there, you think, where, where is Paul in relation to... to to the door. Oh, I'll talk about he that, would, that strategy. He would, right where I showed you, off at a 135-ish, give or take a few degrees, closer to this side, so you could make that angle. You can look, you can look at the directionality in the blood and tell which direction it's going. Okay. okay. And and coming out of the top of his head would be 75 steel pellets. Oh, I want to get to that too. Yes, sir. That, that's right. no other way for him to get out. Yes, sir. And you went out there. Chandler Painter's back in court. And you found one indentation. Well, it's an indentation, but that is a little deceptive because you can see the uh, paint damage to the top of the door. It, it, one indent is what I found, but I said bullet defects. The X got dropped from, I mean, the S got dropped from that. But if you zoom in on that, you can see where the door, the paint was was dis disturbed around that indentation. But one proves it didn't go back the other direction, Mr. Griffin. It doesn't take a lot. So if you'll pull up 188, the defendants in evidence, 188, and this is not under seal. Um, 188, please. We will see what the attorney the general does. Um, the question is, is this guy the defense's boss too? There's no, the defense are private if, attorneys. If you, they do not work for the state AG's office. That would that be a conflict. Um, so, so no. You say there are more defects in no the way. Door? Yes, sir. Did you document any just defects a, that you've observed elected on the official. door? I got him in a photograph. I can show you. I mean, okay. what other documentation did I need to do it to verify that that's the same door? No, no. I, I'm just talking about <laughs> other Fair. pellet. 
marks. Oh, but you should. You should do one in, in you one just out, cut and one that one down. But if all you the way move out. up a little bit, you can see the little indentions right there in the paint. All right, back it up, Doug. Right above the hinge. You I feel right like here. Shanley goes one, with two, three, Queen four, Elizabeth five, six, dressing. Seven. She always dresses in colors, so she's visible. Of them there. And, and then you see this pellet here in the. Um, I did not see that, but I'm vertically challenged, and and I wish I could have looked up and saw that pellet, but I did not see that pellet lodged in that door frame. But I'm glad, Mr. Maybach, Pombach, however you say his name, I'm glad he found it because uh, that even proves my point a little bit more. Well, the, 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 so I'm going to ask you. That mm -hmm. it went up. According to your shot angle, how would a pellet get there? Going up. It's Really? I mean, it, it, the cone. It's a cone, Mr. Griffin. I've already described how shot pattern works. It's a, it's a cone. What? So this, this missed his head, you think? No, no, it come out of his head. Okay. With the and same the ones force that carried his brain out of his room head. Probably also come out of his head. They bounced off that door, the OSB, and in the feed room. Yeah, he said really. And so you believe that... And his really was like a, are you kidding me? Like that, everything that went this up. This pellet... Everything went up. Jam came so yes, pellets went up too. Through his shoulder, through his neck, out the top of his head, and ended up at, at that location. It's a well, shotgun, it didn't Mr. turn Griffin. around and come back out the top of his head. Yes, sir, I do believe that. Well, now you said there's blowback, eight to ten percent. What do you mean? You testified earlier there's blowback about eight. If to someone 10%. is behind the the stock of a long gun, and you shoot someone within distance to have high velocity spatter come back at you, it's going to be eight to 10% of, of what's in front of the gun is going to come back at you. And a lot of the literature supports that. Well, were you, um, I mean, this witness has been a mix between the other experts in his style of answering on cross. Seal, Sometimes uh, yes, no. Sometimes with an explanation, but he's not over explaining the way that the pathologist did, but he's also not just saying no, yes, Under really, the way that the cell phone forensic phone yeeting expert did. So it's, it's kind of an in-between. You see that? Well, which I think this photo. Yes, helps sir. the jury understand. Now, this, this blood spatter down here where you and they're say talking Paul about medium velocity spatter that went up that? and then came back down because um, what do you mean what's my explanation gravity what is it that is medium directional blood spatter up down. Um, what injury to Paul probably his his brain hitting the sidewalk would be my best guess but that's not high velocity now you understand what Mr. Palmback said was that that's more consistent with Paul being shot from the top of the head, going through his neck, out his shoulder, and producing that stain. I also understand Mr. Palmback said there's no damage over here from those shot pellets, and you can't have one without the other. And he's like, and I don't agree, disagree I with disagree that. I disagree don't agree with that, with that either. Yep. I don't agree with that either, is what he's saying. So you believe this is from Paul's brain landing? Either, no, his, brain, most either his brain landing on the sidewalk, bouncing off the door, or either his body falling in body <sighs> fluids outside. That's low velocity, low to medium velocity. That's not high velocity blood spatter. That's stomping in a puddle of blood or something moving in a puddle of blood. That's, that's not the projected blood like you'd have a millimeter or less in high well, velocity blood, blood spatter. Blood spatter that's large. conversation It does is. show some directionality. It's coming from the door frame or either right outside the door frame. You can see the tail. But it's large. That's way too large to be associated with the exit he's hole. He's talking about the gunshot. droplets and he's talking about the tails on the droplets. When he's talking so about the different types of high, medium, and low velocity blood spatter. Outside. I do understand, Mr. Griffin, but I also know his brain made contact disagree. with that door and the top of that door frame before it landed. And I know gravity works and brings body fluids back down to earth. You got one or the other, either that or when he fell in existing blood. That, that is low velocity. Like I said, that's, that's associated with something in a puddle or something large that's not uh, associated with a gunshot or high-speed machinery. Now, would you agree this is a voiding area over here on the door? 
I wouldn't agree it's a void area because I don't see the outline of shoes or I don't see the outline of a, a implement or the outline of anything else. I would say there's more concentrated blood droplets over here on the side opposite the hinge, but I would not necessarily agree that's a void area. I see downward spatter on the door right here. For it to be a void, that would have to be absent blood. Well, you see a little bit. I do, yes, sir. But you don't, you don't see very much blood on the door. Not do compared to the other side. You're, you're correct. Okay. Now, um, but if there's something there, Mr. Griffin, blocking that spot, you're not going to see a little bit. You're going to see none. If you're standing there and I splash you with blood, there's going to be two perfect bloodless footprints there. So that's why I'm not considering this a void. Unless okay. it goes up and comes down. Gravity brings it down. That is right. And if your person had time to move or whatever, I guess that could count for it. But well, I, mean, I don't it consider. Went over the person and came down. And that would do what? If body matter went over, brain Who's went questioning over, who? hit the top of the door, and then bounced out and blood came down, that would account for a drop here or there, would it not? It could count for a drop here or there. But like I told you, the majority of that force is applied upward. Right. Upward. That's why you got the hair on the ceiling. That's why you've got the demarcation line on the containers. That body fluid was directed upward with force. Okay. And the, um, you mentioned there's no footprints here. Was, was any effort made to illuminate footwear impressions through any protein enhancers? I, I didn't see any of that, Mr. Griffin. Fair if question. Did, I, I see no. I saw no evidence of that when I went back to the scene. Generally, when you use dye stains and that kind of thing, it's just going to be there forever. A dye stain would have would have picked up perhaps stained footwear impressions you can't see with the naked eye, wouldn't, wouldn't they? Maybe. It may have if right. someone had stepped in blood and left a footwear impression. Right. Well, there's a shooter somewhere. Inside or outside the door, correct? I, yes, sir. I agree with that. And there's no effort to determine footwear impressions of the shooter. Mr. Griffin, obviously, was, was I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what the process was. I know they examined some partial footwear impressions. You can take this down, though. But I don't know how far they went beyond that. Well, they certainly should have gone further than they did. Would you agree with that? Mr. Griffin, I can only judge what I would do, and sometimes I would, sometimes I wouldn't. If I saw evidence that I had something, that I needed some more detail, I may would use chemicals, but it just depends on the situation. All right, he's pausing for questions. <laughs> I hear you sigh and raise you five. It's fair. I mean, Jim is doing his job. This is an important witness for the state, a and very important witness for the state. And I think using the opportunity to say, but Sled should have done this and that is and a fair opportunity. And, and Jim's going to take it every chance he gets. 197, do you recognize that as essentially a picture outside the feed room door? Paul Printed Heart, yes, Alec is facing other state charges, no Fed and yet. Your Honor would move 197 no in evidence this time without federal. objection, I believe. Are you offering both of them? Yes. Sir. Any objection to either? No federal murder charges, committed. still murder charges. There are rare circumstances where federal charges can be charged that seem like double jeopardy, but it's real specific. Murder is not. What would you make of those pot marks on the concrete outside the feed room door? Chantel, this testimony know, does not put the gun in anybody's hand. It just makes sure that everyone's are. clear that it's possible that so it could be out. Like, I guess they other evidence could be. is what they're going to use they to determine that if they determine that. Also. Yeah, this, okay, this judge, this, this so, witness so is not going to be rattled. Seeing for the jury 197, and then can you zoom in there? Can you go, go, go to 196, please. Linda, that's. Linda said, I wish someone would just look at Alex and say, which was it, Alex? He's presumed innocent. So those could be a, so from a pressure washer, and those happen. could be from a number two birdshot pellets, correct? Well, I don't know. I have to see the semen everywhere else to see how, how it's weathered. Fair. All right. 
Fair enough. <laughs> Lori Leanne said, "Important Mags is running now, toward her son and killer. Well, it seems that that is that, um, the trajectory that you have seen. Part of travel is that twelve Maggie's coming towards the crime killings with scene. contact wounds to the head. I said I've worked about three dozen total. Probably twelve of them were homicides to the head. Uh, the execution thing. I, I don't know if it's execution or just contact, but I would say it's self-inflicted as opposed to someone else doing it." Well, so let's get it right. Thirty-six total. I thought probably three dozen total. Yes, sir. And two-thirds of that was probably self-inflicted. So that would leave twelve. Self-inflicted are usually under the chin and the mouth on the side. Well, the one that I witnessed was to the forehead. To the forehead. Yes, sir. Now, of the thirty-six, how many were shotguns? No, no. I've worked a lot of self-inflicted gunshot deaths. I was saying shotguns. Oh, so dozen. 36 shotguns. Yes, sir. He was saying roughly 12. Shotguns. And a couple of them were accidents too. But yes, sir. Okay. And the um, and how many uh, involved number two birdshot? I don't recall. I had some with birdshot. I don't recall if it was number two, four, eight, nine. I I don't know. And how many were to the back of the head? A dozen, probably a dozen, were to the head. Contact either the back or the sides, or the one I told you about in the front. Okay. And and any of those to the brain uh, evacuate from the from the skull cavity? I have seen them. Uh, I have seen the brains come out. Usually that was from one here. I'm not going to say I haven't seen it. I probably have seen it, uh, but most definitely it. Like I said earlier, when I described it, it looks like it goes away. It's really still there. It's, it's just not something you can quantify. I mean, it's just a mess. That's the only way I can explain it. In your yep. career, have you ever worked a case where, where a victim's brain had been evacuated the way Paul's was in this case? Yes, sir, I have, and tongues also. Tongue, tongue and brain, I have seen them, yes, sir. And, and were those self-inflicted? Both. Okay. Yes, sir. Both. And and you're talking about shotguns? Yes, sir. Okay. Shotguns. And and I think you described those as Hello. execution style Everyone killings. Today. Yes, sir. I would if That's you put high. it on somebody's head from the side or the top. It's hard I would, testimony. That's how I, I would describe it. All right, you. Well, let me ask Good you: Would you. you describe Paul's murder here as an execution style killing? In the context that someone executed him, yes, sir, but it wasn't in the top of the head. I understand. Yes, sir. And that, um, and there was no signs of struggle. You agree with that? I saw none. No, sir. And and would you agree with Mr. Palmback that it appeared that Paul got caught by surprise? I've said that from the start. That would account for his arms being down. Okay. Yes, sir. And or someone he was real comfortable with. And even right. under your analysis, the um, the shooter would have blood, blowback blood on them. Is that correct? I believe they would. Yes, sir. It's just a matter of the quantity between you and, and Mr. Palmback as to how much blood would, would... Well, as I mentioned in my report, as you get closer to the muzzle of the gun, I think proportionally it's going to increase. You know, when I say right. 8 to 10% is what most of the literature says, that's behind the stock. But as you get proportionately closer to the muzzle end of the gun, that's going to increase because you're down at the business end where depending those on pellets how are coming somebody's out holding damage. it. And in this case, you're talking about brain matter. Yes, sir. Blood. Bone. Yes, sir. And getting hit from some skull fragments. Yes, sir. That's possible. Under your scenario as well. Yes, sir. Absolutely. And. And, and lastly, um, how many murder have you worked where one person brings a high-powered assault weapon that has a magazine capacity of 20 or more rounds and a shotgun with maximum capacity maybe three shells? Well, I have worked multiple murders where the available weapons there were used and several calibers were used, 
but I, I can't tell you from memory uh, the other ones. Logically, it would make sense that if you're going to go kill two people and you have a high-powered weapon with a high-capacity magazine, that that was all you need to do the job, right? Well, if the weapon's available, Mr. Griffin, if it's there and it's available and, and, and maybe it wasn't something that I put a lot of thought in, I'm probably going to use whatever's available. Well, here we, we know there were two weapons available. Well, there, was a there were two weapons used. There was a shotgun and I don't know, if we know a what their availability was. AR-15 style 300 blackout. Yes, sir. And both were used. Yes, sir. And there was sufficient capacity in the 300 blackout to kill both Maggie and Paul, correct? Well, in a perfect scenario, a shotgun is what I would want at night with moving targets. But in a perfect scenario, a young man doesn't take a double off buckshot to the middle of the chest and walk away from it. So I, I don't know. I don't think like that. I, I, I don't know. But in the dark, I'd rather have a shotgun than that rifle. Interesting. I wonder if they'll talk about how dark it was. Because I don't think it would have been pitch black at that time of night. Thank you. Indulgence. He's going to beg the court's indulgence. Um, Summer Golden said in the chat, I think an expert can speculate. Yes, they can. Experts can do that. Are you eating the magical chips? No, today we have the flat pretzels, not the what, One more line of question. Buffalo. You, you Excuse me, not the buffalo the ones. Shot the rifle the they think, the the thing, the rifle they think it was does not ago? have a thermal scope. Yes, sir. Now, that was... They don't know if uh, it was Mr. full Fallback or not. Never put anybody inside the door the way y'all demonstrated in his testimony, did he? That is the way I understood it. Yes, no. sir. Well, I mean, he said that, well, can you come up here, Mr. I Arbor? mean, with the void, you're, you're talking about the void. He said there's a void here, and this is where I believe the shooter would be, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Oh, so Poot's the example now? Arbor, and let me find the dowel. Let me Did bend you? down. Don't let him bend down like that. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, why aren't you, wait, so, why aren't you using so coming out of the, the other one? Here. Where's Barber? You're going to get down. Down? Yeah, get down. Here. Almost to the ground. <laughs> and over like this. Further? All the way. Yeah, you, you probably need to get down further, but you probably can't do that. But the shot to the head what as it's coming What is out, happening? Right? Or, boom. He'd have to be twisted this way for it to work out with the arm if that would be. Okay. Yes, sir. But that, that's fine. That's fine. But Mr. Palmback never said that they passed in the door. What is happening? He might not have said those words, but that was it my inference. It would have had to. There's a void there. And when he's in the picture holding his hands here, right. I, I took that to be Paul's head. So uh, that, that's... Uh, what, Okay, did you not understand when he was in the picture? They're using there? Poot to make it awkward. He was demonstrating what your angle had to be to make it work. Well, I wasn't in the in the door with my angle. Uh, I understand. Yeah. Understand. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. That's all we have. Thank you. All right. Briefly, Your Honor. Oh, please. Please be true. Please be accurate with briefly. All right. Uh, I found that was much more Dr. helpful Kinsey, you've had an opportunity than Creighton crawling on the ground in, with uh, the with shots Dr. to Maggie. Lambert, pathologist that actually examined that uh, made sense. Maggie and Paul, correct? Yes, sir, I have. And you had an opportunity to observe and listen to the testimony of Dr. Uh, I think it's Eisenstadt, who was the pathologist that did not examine Maggie and Paul, correct? Yes, sir, I have. You've also had an opportunity to go to the crime scene and observe the feed room, observe the areas where both Maggie and Paul were murdered, correct? That is correct. You've had an opportunity to observe all the brain matter and tissue and the defects and the doors and the wood and everything and get a complete context for what happened that night, correct? Yes, sir. That is correct. Is Dr. Reamer or Dr. Eisenstadt's uh, conclusions about the trauma to the bodies, which one of them is more consistent with what happened at the crime scene as you observed with your expert uh, background? Well, I'll start by saying I don't know either one of them from a can of paint. This was my first time ever meeting Dr. Reamer. 
but I, I, my <laughs> opinions are consistent with hers. I don't know either one of them I vary a little bit on the page. distance, but like I said, I'm not going to argue with a pathologist. That's not my, I'm not that kind of doctor. Real quick, you differ with her a little bit on the distance of what? Of the fatal shot to Paul's shoulder, I believe it was a little bit closer, and I can't account for that lack of stippling. But other than that, her opinions and my opinions are fairly consistent. But that would not change, that difference of opinion would not change your conclusions either way? No, sir, they would not. For the sake of this redirect, let's assume for a moment that the angles, the angle of impact and the direction that the defense posed were accurate. Are there other variables that a defense expert didn't account for that could change the height of the shooter? Well, uh, as I demonstrated, positioning, uh, distance, height, the way you're holding the weapon that could place those cartridge cases there, uh, it, it's nothing uniform about it. As I said, it's static and dynamic. So the Tommy, shooter is running Tommy, around funny. and the victim is moving, correct? That's, yes, sir. It's chaotic. Yes, sir. It's crazy. Yes, sir. I would imagine it was. There's no way to know, unless you were there, how the gun was being shouldered, where it was being held, the angle. There's no way to know that. I have no way of knowing that. You were asked about how much you were being paid to be here today. Do you recall what the hourly rates of the defense experts were when they? Oh testified? gosh, the jury do. does. Can you go ahead and? The jury recalls because it's more some than probably most of them make. dollars an hour. Some was six hundred and fifty dollars an Look hour, and I think one was fifty-five hundred dollars a day, if I'm not mistaken. The jury remembers. And the jury knows. Just trust the jury to remember. The jury knows how much those oh. def the chat remembers. Because most people don't make that kind of money. So when they hear it, they're like, oh. Really? Jim, pictures you just put into evidence. Oh. Stuck in Florida said in the chat, no rule of sequestration. Yeah, the witnesses are all allowed to be in court all the time. It's weird. I don't get it. I don't like it. Okay, I'm showing you with Martha State. I, just, I don't know why that's the practice. It's just whoop. strange. Do you know I mean, when that picture was taken? I have no idea. Okay, sir. I'm showing you what's been marked as uh, state. Uh, excuse me, defense defendants exhibit 196. Do you know when that picture was taken? I have no idea. No, sir. Is there anything about the defects of that photo that stand out to you uh, uh, other than just concrete defects? They're not very uniform. But no, sir, other than, other than that. Does that photo tell you anything? It tells me nothing, no, sir. That's all I have, thank you. You're quite well. Anything further? No, thank you, you may step down. State, are we done? State, are we done? State, it's 4.50 in the Any east. Further witnesses by the state. Your Honor, in the rebuttal case, the state rests. Ladies and gentlemen, the state is arrested. I'm going to have you go to the jury room for a break. Please do not discuss the case. They're like, a break? Aren't we done for the day? Y'all, we did it. We did it. The evidence for our purposes is done. The jury's going to have a jury view. But the evidence is done. The only thing left is argument and jury instruction for us. The jury will do a jury view. <laughs> Judge Newman is all of us. <laughs> y'all, we made high fives in the chat. Everyone be seated. High fives all the way around. Y'all, good work. We did it. We made it. And here we are. We want to make Mr. Um, Arpulian or Mr. Griffin about Sir Rebuttal. Sorry. About Sir Rebuttal. Sir Reply. No, thank you. No. No further arguments. So the um, we run out of time today as far as the jury view. Um, we're going to take a uh, recess for me to confer with counsel. Oh, no, just do it on the record. No. Just do it on the record.
All right. They're going to work out when they're going to do jury view. I imagine that the attorneys are going to ask to do closing argument. They'll be back to do closing argument and jury instruction on Thursday. Let the jury do the jury view tomorrow and then do the, um, do the rest of it on Thursday. That's at least what I would ask for. I think this is a big case. There's a lot for them to summarize. And I think it's fair to do the jury view in the morning. We'll just take the day tomorrow and then come back on Thursday for closing. That makes sense to me scheduling wise. We'll see what makes sense to the court scheduling wise. You know, I'm sorry for all of you in the chat who said motion to have closing not on Thursday. I don't think they're going to be done with these closings in a half day. And I don't think splitting the closings over a night is fair to the parties. If you have the scheduling opportunity to do the closings on Thursday. So we'll see. They're all conferring up at uh, the bench and let's go. So I think, I think it's probable closings will be on Thursday, but we'll see. So you get to sleep in tomorrow. Yes. I have appointments tomorrow. I really hope they, uh, we'll see. We're just going to see what happens. We're just going to see what happens. Brazen Spirituality said, why does it matter if Maggie's phone lit up? The screen going on in Maggie's phone has to do with whether or not it would have recorded the fact that it changed orientation when it was being thrown, and it changes the time. If, if you believe that when the phone is being yeeted, the screen is on and it's recording the orientation change as it is being yeeted, then the defense is arguing that the phone was yeeted around 9.06. Well, we know from Alec Murdoch's GPS in his car that he's not down the road by Maggie's phone at 9.06. But if the phone doesn't necessarily go on when you um, when you yeet it, then the state's argument is that the yeeting happened later and that Alec is the one who threw the phone. So that's why it matters if the phone lit up because it, connects back to now whether the jury remembers any of this is a whole different story but it connects back to the phone orientation changes and the timeline because of the gps data on alex's phone is there a time limit to bring a retrial if the jury hangs um it would have to generally be within the statute of limitations uh though jurisdictions may have their own time period they may have their own time period of when to retry it sometimes they try to do it very quickly it just depends um, we're, we're a ways away from that. And I haven't looked up, um, South Carolina, but I will question. What happens if a juror has to leave during deliberation? Um, then the alternates sub in, there are still two alternates left in this case for now. And I think this jury is probably deeply invested. Lori said, this case has been like following the yellow brick road full of potholes made by hogs. <laughs> Who knew hogs would play so heavily at the beginning of this trial? I thought it was going to be the puddles of water, but no, by the time we got to the end, of the trial, it was the wild hogs that that took so much of the attention. Um, I like Dr. Kinsey too. I like him as a witness. I found him easier to follow this go round because I had more visual context, and that's a problem for me. I need the visual context, and the defense brought in more visual context to this case than the prosecution did, and so it made this testimony easier for me. Um, Karen said, did he decide, talking about the AG, did he decide to take over and tell Waters to take a seat? I don't know. I wonder if he decided all the way. Um, could the AG end up doing close? I think it'll be Waters, but we'll see. Um, he's the H-A-G-I-C, head attorney general in charge. He absolutely is the HBIC. Um, is he after the, <laughs> is he here after the popcorn shit show dumpster fire last week? I don't know. It could have always been planned. It could have not been. It could. I don't know. Can Mr. Bossy Boss do closing, please? We'll see. The AG is like, y'all stay in your seats. I'm going to try to clean up this mess you've made real quick. I thought his questioning was really clear. I liked the AG's demeanor in court, and I liked his questioning um, quite a lot. I found him to be really easy to follow. Jamie said, email steps data. The step data submitted by the state shaved off 29 seconds in the 71 step window, making it not an anomaly, probably correcting that. Um, yeah, that would be a big correction. And if I was the defense, I probably would have asked to have that correction put on the record in front of the jury. Can the jurors test eat their phones? They should not be doing experiments. It doesn't mean that they won't. 
Sharon said, Emily, I'm stuck at home due to health issues. Thank you for making my time more enjoyable. You're welcome. When I had my ACL surgery on my left knee, which is why when all of the when all of the witnesses are joking about their knees in court, I'm like, I feel that. I feel that deeply. Um, when I was home with my ACL repair, I played video games the entire time. But if I had had either an iPad or an iPhone or been able to watch YouTube on my television, I might not have. But I didn't. I couldn't sit at my desk because I needed to have my leg elevated on the couch. So video games it was. Amanda said, hey, y'all, I hope everyone is having a good day. I know I asked earlier, but I need to know who I talk to if I have questions on my Patreon level. Um, email us help at Emily D. Baker and we can help. It will definitely get seen faster that way than if you DM on Patreon. So help at Emily D. Baker and we will get that taken care of. He probably saw the online complaints about the state on Twitter. I don't know about that. I can't imagine. You never know. Changing course in the middle of a case is always difficult uh, for me, but you never know. Let's see. Um, Cynthia CM said chicken and and state going to present charges against Bubba the dog. I mean, Bubba should present his own charges um, against everyone for the trauma, for the, the Bubba trauma. Kayla said, I think it's possible that the email was likely regarding Maggie's autopsy photo that was accidentally shown on the screen towards the camera. It's it's possible. Um, Jillian said, I wonder if he chose to step this afternoon in after seeing how hard his team beefed it up this morning. The, the witnesses this morning were not ideal. Emily, he decided to take over after what he's seen today. I don't know. We, I mean, we can speculate, but I liked the way the AG did the questioning. Truly. It's clear that he's a trial attorney. There are some jurisdictions where the attorneys that are elected have never done a trial. It's odd to me when the head prosecutor in a jurisdiction has never actually done a trial. Very odd. Generally, you want head prosecutors to do lots of trials because they understand charging decisions and the impact crime has on victims and the impact prosecutions have on defendants and their families and the community. You want that level of knowledge and empathy and skill all combined. But it just, again, jurisdiction by jurisdiction. So Ms. Fitzmommy said, can you please try and identify the weapons they caught on drones of Buster and JM removing. Uh, that is, I don't know when that drone footage was taken. Um, I've seen it discussed. I have not gone and looked at the documentary or docu-series or investigative report or just series. Um, but if that was something they wanted to investigate, they would. Have you ever seen an AG testify in a case before? Testifying, no, but doing the job of an AG. Yes. AGs don't always do a ton of criminal trials. It really depends. It's normally because there's a conflict with the local prosecutors. Um, and if there's a conflict with the local prosecutors, then you see the AG's office come in. That's what they did here. So, um, that's what, that's why they're in this case. Would you do a joint live with the behavior panel about this trial? I mean, I, does the behavior panel do lives? I don't know. Directions unclear. Dal stuck in the ceiling fan. True. The Dow, the, I appreciated them using the Dow most of the time um, versus using the weapons. I do appreciate the way they were conscientious about the weapons. And if you notice, when the AG was using the weapon to demonstrate, he was still pointing it off center of the witness, not direct center. So you get the idea, but he wasn't pointing it at him. Um, so I thought that was appreciated. Appreciate, I appreciated that. Temp said, I was thinking the same thing as soon as he put the rod in the box. <laughs> Pick a rod that fits the hole the best and make it feel better. <laughs> the rod in the box was just a whole thing. Move over, Dennis. We got a new rod man. Very clever. This is why Chad is bae. Mia Mo said, question, why do they call her Miss Maggie and not Miss Mrs. Maggie? Wasn't she married to Alec? I think she was commonly referred to as Miss Maggie locally and by those that knew her. Um, and so I think that that is common to the way that she was referred to instead of calling her Mrs. Maggie. I just think that is a, a regionally specific, um, a term of endearment, if you will, to call her Miss Maggie. Um, just like they were calling Miss Shelley, Miss Shelley. So everybody being called Miss is very, um, very, uh, I don't know, appropriate. It's, it's a, it's a, just a, 
um, more of a term of endearment, if that makes sense. The chat, the chat will, we have lots of Southerners in the chat and the chat will let you know. So the jurors have nothing to look at when deliberating. Oh no, Megan, the jurors have lots to look at when deliberating. They get to look at the evidence and the exhibits. They just don't get to look at notes. So they can look at everything that's been submitted during this trial, but they won't have notes to look at. So if that helps, um, so let us continue on. I'm just looking to see if there's any info about what's happening in court. We're waiting for court to come back. I wish the witness could ask the defense attorney how much he was making to represent Alec. I, it's everybody gets paid. I don't think it's odd in cases like this. It's like everybody gets paid. It's fine. Um, you know, where do I live when I don't live here anymore? Oh, UK Kate, don't worry. We'll find another trial where we live. You always live here with the law nerds. We just, we've moved into the channel. Christy, do you still play Pokemon Go? Not in the last six weeks, but yes, in general. K-Skills, question if Moselle has changed so much since the murders, what's going to be gained by a jury view? Also, best tips to help focus a fellow neurospicy gal. Um, best tips to help focus. I am not the best at focus. Find what makes it happy for your brain and create an environment that works best for you, but that requires paying attention and taking notes of what works well for you or really taking notes of what doesn't work well for you. For me, I get highly distracted by noise. Part of my in-ears are so I can hear, but part of it's because they're my in-ears are noise canceling, so I won't get as distracted by noise. I needed to soundproof my office a bit so that I don't hear noises outside my office because I'll get distracted. So it's figuring out the things that pull your attention the most and then go from there. And if Moselle has changed so much, the buildings I don't think have changed that much. And we've seen that the defense experts in their photos were there within the last few months taking photos of the location. So even though the trees have changed, the um, the buildings are still the same. So um, Emma said, waiting for an ADHD diagnosis for my daughter. She feels very empowered to achieve knowing how amazingly talented and successful you are. I don't know how talented I am or successful. I love what I do and I love that I get to do this. So thank you. And yes, um, you have to use, you have to use what you got to your advantage. We all use our best skills and, um, figuring out, as I said before, what works and doesn't work for you is the best, the best skill. Um, end of twilight that day in Hampton, South Carolina was 8 59 PM sunset was at eight 39. So it would have been evening, but not like dark, dark, dark when these murders are alleged to have happened by the prosecution. The drone footage of rifles was from Eric Allen. He has a YouTube channel where he discusses the footage and the release of it. Okay. So the dates are probably there. Referring to someone as miss is a Southern thing. I mean, I think it's sweet. Can Alec use footage of the handling of guns in this case to defend himself in his own case? Oh, Alec Baldwin. <laughs> and say, see? Oh, hi, Fred. See? Look at them. Um, no, but I appreciate the, I appreciate it. I don't understand why the jury can't take notes. Can you explain? I can't explain why this jurisdiction doesn't have jurors take notes. Um, I know there is debate over whether notes impact your memory, notes impact your listening, whether you can get distracted by taking notes, whether people get too, um, hi, bud, whether, hi, okay, whether people get too attached to their notes, because in the jury process, there's supposed to be flexibility so that the jury can debate the evidence, can talk about it and come to a conclusion together. And there are some um, reports about whether people can become too married in their viewpoint by their notes and not by their memory and relying on their notes and not their memory. So I think there's a lot of variation on notes and where note taking is allowed. It is not uniform across the, uh, the U S and jurisdictions where notes are allowed. Some jurisdictions notes are allowed. Some jurisdictions, they're not allowed at all. Some jurisdictions you can ask. It just depends. Fred is just like, he's like tails up, man, tails up. Can the jury ask to go to Moselle home and ask for the guns to be fired in the kennels to see? No, they can't do experiments like that. They have to rely on that evidence and testimony they've been presented. Don't they still have to discuss jury instructions tomorrow afternoon? Maybe we'll see. They're scheduling right now. I just wish it was on the record. Wonder why no testimony from Maggie's parents. It sounded from John Marvin's testimony that Maggie's parents aren't well. I also don't know what they would know with regard to... Um, with regard to this case with Maggie's sister testifying. 
AES question at the field viewing, will the jury just walk around on their own? Yes. Or will the lawyers be making arguments and showing them specific things? No, they will be there to see it. And then they will like, Fred, you're drooling on me, man. This cat, I'll tell you what. So no, they, there will not be discussion. They will not be allowed to discuss. They're not deliberating yet. Question, I know the jury can't take notes during trial, but can they go home and write everything down to remember and review it? They, I mean, it, they're not supposed to, but did the court ever specifically tell them not to? No, I don't know if they would want to, um, but they can't then bring that into the jury room for deliberations. So if that helps. Um, Crystal said the jury view seems like a waste. The defense has asked and they are allowed to ask. Fred. Um, Sarah asked your cat drools. Oh, when he's, when he is, um, purring, he drools. Yep. He sure does. He's an orange cat. Apparently not uncommon with the tabby cats, but he drools. He absolutely drools. I'm talking about, I am. He's glaring at me. Like, how dare you talk about me on the internet? Um, Kelly said, why did this trial go on so long? The prosecution. And I still walk away undecided because it's a difficult case. Why did they not test more physical evidence? There wasn't any. Uh, well, that's not necessarily accurate. It's not that there wasn't any. It's that nothing else was preserved. There was nothing else to test. They tested what they preserved, but they didn't preserve everything. Um, so why didn't they preserve more? I think there is a, um, I think they were dealing with weather. I think they were dealing with time. I think they were deferential to Alec and everyone that showed up, um, at the crime scene. So I think there's a lot of reasons why they didn't preserve this crime scene better. I think they should have preserved the crime scene better, but once they preserve it or don't preserve it, there's nothing left to test. So there was no other physical evidence to test the things they did test. They tested quite a lot. I think, um, I love seeing how many of you have drooler cats got a main coon cat myself. He drools. Yep. <laughs> oh, I don't take it as, I don't take it as Fred Slander. Look, the only way we learn things is by asking. I didn't know cats drooled before I had this cat either. And I've had multiple cats in the past. None of them drooled question. Why didn't we hear from cousin Eddie? Elizabeth, isn't that the question we all would like to know? All of us wanted to hear cousin Eddie's testimony. I think it was too much of a mess for both sides and nobody wanted, nobody wanted to go there. I think it was too much of a mess. I think we could have been a week with messy cousin Eddie testimony. This case is already enough of a mess. Re really and truly. Are we sure no life insurance on Paul and Maggie? That's the testimony that we've heard. Question looking for noise canceling in ears for a long time. Where can I find it? Thank you very much. These are shores. Um, so they are sure in ears. I don't remember exactly which number I got, but um, they have them at like Guitar Center, or at least here in Nashville. The Guitar Center here is prolific, um, but you can also find them on Amazon. I think they're on my Amazon shop, which is linked down below to see the things I use for streaming. I'm pretty sure my in-ears are in the shop, but if not, I'll add them tonight. I heard that no one would shoot a Murdaw with a Murdaw gun, but a Murdaw. I don't know if the defense is, or the prosecution will argue it, um, but they're going to argue this family was powerful. Jasmine says, Smith said, practiced in a jurisdiction where the sitting DA had never actually tried a case before a jury, but ran uncontested. So it's an odd thing. It's an, it's an, it's an odd thing. I, but I'm sitting here as a former prosecutor saying, I don't know how you could understand the intricacies of this type of trial work without having done a lot of this type of trial work. Um, there's times I'm just like, you know, I've done a lot of trials and a lot of court hearings in 10 years, but there's times I'm still like, oh, you know, another five years. What could we have done with another five years? Um, but then we would have started running into like, you know, a panini and things like that. Jury view, probably not on record because drones might record. The drones definitely shouldn't record. And how they're doing the, well, it's going to be in the court. They're going to set up when they're doing things, not on the record, but they definitely will have an issue with drones recording. Um, and hopefully there aren't. And then that gets into at what in South Carolina, at what height do you have to be for the drones to actually lawfully be there and not be trespassing? And that's a whole thing, but drones should not be recording the jury. Uh, the jury's entitled to their privacy. Tina said, thank you for getting us through this long part of the trial, Emily. 
Uh, yeah, this trial's been longer than we expected. It's been Depp Heard length. Oh, that's what I'm going to ask you in the poll. For those of you that watch Depp Heard, I'm going to ask which trial felt felt longer. Um, which one felt longer to you, Depp? Depp v. Heard, uh, State v. Murdaugh. All right, I'm asking y'all which one felt longer, felt to your soul, felt longer. Parrot Love 3 said, Emily, I'm still bothered about the casings in the flower bed by the house and the ones around Maggie Murdoch's body from the same family weapon. If not AM, then who? The defense is contesting that that is accurate testimony. The defense is contesting the tool markings and saying same or similar gun. And other people have 300 blackouts. It's a gun that seems com fairly common or fairly common to be used. And it's modified from other guns that are machine made. So same or similar doesn't mean the exact same gun. And that's what the defense is arguing. The prosecution's arguing the casings at the shoot house, the casings in the near the door of the gun room, fun room, game room, and the casings by Maggie Murdo's body came from the same weapon. And there's others that are saying you can't know it came from the same weapon without having that weapon to fire it. So that's in controversy. The jury gets to decide how they believe it. If the jury believes the tool marking, then yeah, I don't know how you get around the family gun. And that's the state's, one of the state's uh, arguments that they've leaned heavily into. Victoria said, theory, someone who wants AM to suffer, held him at gunpoint, make him watch. I don't know about that. Um, I, 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 I mean, it's a, it's a theory. I don't think we have evidence of any of that. Um, when there are, the more people involved in the thing, the harder the thing is to keep secret. And a B said question, do we know the history of what the of why the jurors can't take notes? Seems like it would make for more accurate verdicts and faster deliberations. Not necessarily. So uh, for all the reasons we I talked about before. And when people get when people get connected to their notes, because again, perception being a thing, when people get connected to their notes and not listening to the testimony, they can miss things. Um, they can over rely on their notes and not their memory. And juries are supposed to rely on their memory of the evidence. What about insurance on the property for the wrongful death, like what was paid to Gloria Satterfield? I don't believe there was insurance on the house after the Satterfield accident, and we heard about that, or after the Satterfield death, and we heard about that in Tinsley's testimony, if not other testimony as well, because Alec was underinsured in the boat case, in part because of the Satterfield payout. Creighton mentioned that they would need more testimony if they did a jury view to explain how the property has changed. Is that still possible? He rested. So no. Some people are better note takers than others. They don't want someone to have an advantage and convince the other jurors based on their notes. It's fair. Um, they forgot bullet holes in the back window proved no one was behind Paul. They argued, the pathologist argued that, well, the pathologist testified to that today. Um, Shona said, when they unseal more crime scene autopsy photos, I don't think the autopsy will be unsealed. The graphic crime scene photos, I don't think will be unsealed. There should be more that are available. Um, I just haven't seen the media putting them up and it might be because they haven't had people in court to grab them. The way that the court is allowing the media to grab them has been limited. What's the point of objecting to leading? If you lead, you're telling the witness or it can be perceived as you're telling the witness what to answer. And it can also be a strategic objection to break up a flow if you want to break up somebody's flow. There's why you object and don't object in court is very much a uh, a, strat a strategic decision. Amanda said, this has been the best witness of the whole trial, the most clear, concise demonstration. Finally, some sense has been made. I mean, this is why they tell the jury not to make up their mind all the way till the end. Would AM be handcuffed at Moselle with the jury I don't know how they will decide to handle that. Should he be? Yes. Will he be? I don't know. The sheriff's department will have to decide. Also, will he be free to walk around or will he be there standing in one spot? We'll see. How does the court allow accommodation? It depends on the court. So Liz is tired. It depends on what accommodation is needed and it depends on the court. Truly. Um, court accommodations are evolving all right, I'm going to go take a look real quick and see if um, those in court have said anything because we are not seeing it. 
Um, let me see real quick what Avery has said, if anything. Um, let's see. Avery said, so in five and a half weeks of trial, jurors have heard from 76 witnesses, several of them more than once. Ronnie Crosby testified three times while only in front of the jury twice. The state called in 61 of its initial witnesses. The defense called in 14. The state called one new witness, T.C. Smalls, in its reply. Oh, court's back. Let's get our scheduling together. How many ways can you explain the angle of the dangle is proportional to the direction of the ejection? I appreciate that, Plasmo Cat. Okay, that's the end, end of all of the testimony. Um, I don't know whether or not... Uh, another motion or matter of law needs to be addressed at the end of reply. Uh, yes. Do you need to preserve the record any further? No, sir. All right. Scheduling. So we need to discuss jury charges. Um, also, the jury view. It is 5.15. We live here now. Yes, sir. We just want to, I'm not sure I've read a case on this, but renew all previously made motions concerning uh, directed verdict um, so as to preserve them. That's, I'm not going to argue the grounds. Yes, sir. That's, that's, that's what, what he I was, was just asking you. Suggesting and to preserve the record, and the court um, denies any motions regarding dismissals or directed verdicts. That's what he asked for. So we need to have the jury come. You bring the jury. All right. He's bringing back the jury to give them the schedule. I wonder if the jury's going to, he's going to be like, we're bringing back the jury. You're going to go on a jury view and they're going to be like, ah, <laughs> more. We'll see. Um, so let's hear from the scheduling. They're going to need a half day to discuss jury instructions. And that might be tomorrow afternoon. It would make sense that they do the view, view in the morning charge. They deal with the instructions in the afternoon and then argue Thursday. The jury is present. Hey, very good. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have now, you have now heard all of the, very good. Testimony. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have now, you have now heard all of the testimony and received all of the evidence in the case. Uh, and we are essentially done for the day. But um, when you return tomorrow morning, we're going to um, have the, an escort take you all to the um, subject property moselle to to have a view a jury view of the location um and i i will be there as well to ensure things go as they should um but i need to instruct you as to how it so he's happens. instructing the jury on the um, view and give you this instructions and that is that You'll be taken to the scene of the alleged crimes. And while you are on your way to the scene and from the scene, uh, you are not allowed to discuss the case Can't with deliberate. anyone, including your fellow jurors. And you're not allowed while there to ask any questions of anyone who may be there including any law enforcement personnel um, or any other court official. You cannot ask questions. If you have any questions, you can only ask me. Um, you're still, you still have not heard closing arguments and have not begun deliberating. So the way, the way tomorrow is expected to go, you will come you have the jury view. After the jury view, you'll return uh, for closing arguments. No. Uh, then I will instruct you as to the law that you are to apply. Then you will deliberate in an effort to reach a verdict. 
but it's absolutely essential that you understand that you're being taken there to view the scene. Uh, now, it has been um, a year and a half okay. or more uh, since June 7th of 2021, since the uh, alleged crime occurred, and uh, things have changed, or most likely have changed. You have different season of the year, this change of circumstances as far as the property is concerned. This is uh, what so, they must have been discussing. Uh, you have to take that in mind and certainly consider that, but still it's the same location. And it, uh, I've determined that it would be beneficial uh, to you to be able to observe the scene that everyone has been talking about. And we'll do that tomorrow morning. Uh, so I want you to, we'll prepare to leave now. I'm going to uh, have you go back to the jury room and the, we'll just talk with the bailiff for a moment and then you all will be dismissed for the day and I'll instruct the uh, personnel to uh, take you directly to the scene at the designated time tomorrow morning, which will be uh, 9.30. Um, do you all get here before 9.30, like 9 o'clock? Um, so they're like no. Well, we'll say 9:30, but it may, but you may leave before 9:30 since apparently you all get here pretty early. Um, so we'll see how that works tomorrow morning. Uh, so if you'll go to the jury jury room now and and we'll prepare to dismiss for today, and we'll see you all after the view after the view tomorrow morning. So if you go to the jury room, well, the judge will see them at the jury view. So the judge is indicating that they will go do the jury view, which is going to take at least 45 minutes there, 45 minutes back, the amount of time they're at the property. And then the judge is indicating when they return, there will be closing argument tomorrow. So I'm sure Poot's going to ask the judge to narrow down exactly what time that is. Um, so we'll see. The jury, once the jury's out of the room, we'll see what the scheduling is. Okay, uh, as I stated, the scene will be secure um, and the uh, law enforcement will ensure that uh, no one is there to distract or to interfere with the jury view. I'm going to administer an oath to the um, people who will be transporting the jury, um, bailiffs, to deputies, whoever they the are. Jury uh, Danny Gregory, safe. if you all would come forward now, Danny Gregory. Ruben Carter, Bill Polk, and Taylor Flynn. All right. This Phil, normally happens when the jury goes into If you all would come and stand, and I'll administer the, the, the oath to you. Oath and charge for those transporting the jury. <clears throat> all right. And if you first just state your names. Ruben Carter. Taylor Flynn. Daniel Gregory. Bill Polk. All right. If you all raise your right hands, please. Do you swear that you will keep the jurors during the time you escort them to the property uh, on Moselle or at Moselle and you'll return them to the jury room and that you will now allow no person to speak to them, including yourself, while you have them in your custody unless the court otherwise gives you permission? If you accept that oath, please say I do. I do. All right. Thank you very much. And uh, as I've said to the jury, the plan is to, uh, since I've told them now about the jury view, is that when they meet in the morning, uh, I intend to go and maybe the clerk or one or two of the court folks, um, but we'll go there prior to the jurors, prior to them coming here. Um, so any questions about anything? Okay. Very good. The jurors cannot and, speak about um, the case at all. Not until after closing. And Mr. Pope. Not until they are given jury just instructions. A second. So no, Do the jurors can't ask questions. The, Pope, the, ju right? the jurors can't ask questions unless they need to ask something of the judge, which would be, can we use the restroom? Can we go now? Um, but no, the jurors can't ask questions. 
they can't discuss the case. So one juror can't look at the other juror and be like, oh, this is the doorway. It does look bigger or smaller. They can't discuss it at all. They can't talk to the people transporting them. They can talk amongst themselves. Oh, it's hot. Oh, it's cold. Um, they can talk about the weather. They can talk about their families. They can talk about what they had for dinner. They cannot talk about the case. So the, um, yeah, they can't talk about the case. I saw the question from um, Timely Badger in the chat. The alternates do go. All, all of the jurors go. You never know when the alternates will need. All right, I'm going to meet with the lawyers and, and discuss uh, jury charges. Uh, anything else before we adjourn for the day? After the day, Your Honor. All right, very well. What time will you all be back tomorrow? Adjournment. Let's see. Now, I want to say adjourn till 930, but we'll have the yes, jury at 930. We need the court please reporters. tell us what time. If you all stand by. We're going to adjourn until... 10:30. We're not. We're not adjourning. We're going to have to discuss jury charges. I guess what I'm saying is, if we go out there and I mean, thank you, Pooh. We're allowed to go out there and watch the jury if they look at things and not speak with them. Thank you, Pooh. Um, you think they'll be back here by what time? I'm thinking 10:30. What? They're going to leave here at 9:30. Maybe before 9:30. It's 45 minutes out there. I'm going to figure all that out, but I'm. We may not be back exactly at 10.30, but we're going to shoot for 10.30. It may be 11 o'clock. It's a 45-minute yes, drive. I mean, Maybe 11.30. Well, we'll be well, out there. say 11 o'clock. How about that? Judge, no. I mean, I don't know. You know. It's whenever we get back, really. If I'm at Moselle with the jurors and, we're, and they're not, it takes 25 minutes to get there. Oh. They're going to be probably there for an hour, 25 minutes. So that's about two hours total. They're not going to be there I for an hour. Want to, yeah. We'll say um, 11 o'clock. That'd be great. Thank 11 you. 11 o'clock. Yeah. Um, 25 minutes. And we'll, we'll be in a German until we... Arguing when they get back, arguing and charging tomorrow. Yes. Argue, charge, deliberation tomorrow. Right. <laughs> All righty then. All right. Very good. And whether we deliberate will depend upon what time argument ends. Poot, I agree. Did you hear Poot? He goes, all righty then. And that's exactly how I felt. I am surprised that they're not doing the jury view in the morning. They're going to do jury deliberate. They're going to do the jury instructions now. I don't think they're going to come back to the courtroom. I wish they would. Jury instructions are something that are often put on the record. They'll probably discuss it and then formalize it, but I don't think we'll see them put that on the record. Okie dokie. So, all righty then. The judge says, here, let's do a swoop. Let's do a swoop a doop and a little bit of a recap. All righty then. All right. At the end of day 26, evidence is over. I know. I know. We're done. We're done. Evidence is over. The state has rested their rebuttal. There will be no sir rebuttal. We're going to get to closing arguments. That's going to apparently happen tomorrow afternoon. The jury is going to do a jury view at Moselle in the morning. The judge thinks it'll take an hour. <laughs> we'll see. So the judge thinks they'll be resuming court around 11. So we'll be back here around 11. Um, maybe we'll talk about other things. We'll just figure it out until court resumes we're just going to hang out until that happens and then they're going to instruct the jury and do closing arguments tomorrow closing arguments will start after 11 a.m eastern 10 a.m central so that's what's happening tomorrow today at the end of the day um we had the state's crime scene expert testify. I think it was their strongest rebuttal witness. While I appreciate Ronnie Crosby's testimony, I don't know if it helped as much determine the manner in which these murders were committed as the state's rebuttal. And he was questioned by the elected attorney general of the state of South Carolina, who we had not seen question a witness at all yet. So that was an interesting change. I liked the uh, attorney's pacing. I thought he was very clear in his direct examination and most of the chat. I mean, we had over, over 45 to 50,000 of you during that testimony was like, Hey, where's this guy been? 
Bring him back. Bring him back, y'all. Bring him back. So with that, I asked you in the chat. Um, we can end the poll, Miguelina. I asked which trial felt longer, Depp v. Hurd or State v. Murdoch. 79% of you said that you thought State v. Murdoch felt longer with 11,000 votes. 20% of you, Depp v. Hurd felt longer. Depp v. Hurd was a little bit longer of a trial, but Depp v. Hurd did not have trial on Fridays. So we were like Monday through Thursday and we got a cute little break on Fridays. This case has had like no breaks. It's had no chill. It's been wild. There's been parts that have been very difficult to follow. And I think that's where the where comes in is that when the testimony is difficult to follow, it grates on your brain really to try to follow it. And so some of these days felt very, very long. So closing arguments tomorrow. Get it. Perfect. That's, that's what we're doing tomorrow. So I think today's testimony was helpful for the state. We'll see how clear their closing is tomorrow. And um, yeah, we'll see. I'm going to answer a few more questions and then it is 4.30 here. I'm going to take, I'm going to take the evening. I am tired. Are you tired? I'm, I am exhausted, but we've got a new podcast for you tomorrow. Maybe I'll just premiere that in the morning. So you guys can go watch the podcast in the morning uh, before we resume. And then we don't have to worry about the jury um, argument going long. It sounds like the judge intends to start argument around 11 a.m. and go through until argument is done tomorrow. So we'll see. We have lots of things to talk about uh, in this case, but we're not there yet. Emily, where'd you get those big dangly earrings? These are Kendra Scott earrings, not sponsored, but I mean, I would take it. I love these earrings and I've worn them uh, for years. I love them. Oh, can I tell you the best Kendra Scott, Scott story real quick? So I was on a trip. Um, Alec Murdaugh has left court, so he's not staying in court while they discuss jury instructions, which is interesting. But Alec Murdaugh is being transported out of court now. I was on a trip um, with a bunch of friends in Mexico. The resort where we were at was like four resorts connected or something. So they had a lot of golf carts that would take you round and about. I lost one of my earrings and I was super bummed about it. And I was telling them the story in the store as I was in there to look at, um, to look at the earrings and they sold me a new pair of earrings for the cost of like one of the ones I lost. I was stunned. Like the customer service was just absolutely impeccable and I appreciated it. Um, let's see. Um, dear Dana said, plus he could have easily hired shooters. Really? He had the money to do so. No problem with that. And if the jury is like, well, he would have known about it, but I don't think he did it. They're going to come back with a not guilty verdict. Why does Murdoch get to go to the jury view? He's the defendant on trial, so the rights are his. He gets to see what the jury is doing. Whether he's waiving that or not, we will see. How the sheriff's department facilitates that, we won't get to see, but we'll probably hear about. Because we're hearing that there will be a photographer and videographer on site to kind of memorialize that. They won't be publishing pictures of the jury. And um, we'll hear closing arguments tomorrow which is wild um let's see i love a good field trip do we need to bring a sack lunch yes snacks and water can the jurors ask about the buildings i.e is this x building not really um if they ask anything they've got to ask the judge but i think from the photos they've seen they'll be able to perceive that do you find it odd that they didn't hire a craning company I don't know what we mean by a craning company. No, I, so I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Wouldn't visiting the scene at night be closer to the conditions present at the time of the murders? Yes, but they're not going there really to see how it was at the time of the murders. They're going to get a sense for the layout, for the size and things like that. So it would be easier for them to see in the day, but they do have to consider that the conditions were different. And that is something that they will have to consider when they deliberate. Can they ask, are we there yet? I think it would be cheeky, but no, I think they probably shouldn't. Question, did they indicate that closing arguments would be limited to two hours on each side? No. Or was that just in the case that arguments would be split between attorneys on each side? Arguments are not going to be split between attorneys. Arguments are not going to be limited in time. Criminal cases are different. Oftentimes, they do not limit arguments in criminal cases, except when there's a special reason why, like the... Um, like the circumstance with Daryl Brooks, there was some, like the state's like, we'll rein it in 
so that he can rein it in because he was representing himself pro per, things like that. But generally in criminal cases, they do not limit closings. But also your closings shouldn't take 100 years. If you can't make it simple for the jury from the prosecution's perspective, if you can't make it simple for the jury, then you are not doing a great job presenting your case, even when it's a complex case. You have to find a way to make it clear. So no, no time limit on the closings. Um, why didn't defendants show evidence of social media threats to Paul? I don't know. I don't know why they didn't. I don't know if they didn't preserve them. They could have subpoenaed them. The defense doesn't have to prove their case. They only have to prove that the state didn't prove their case. So the defense doesn't have to prove anything. They have to show that the def that the prosecution didn't prove it. But with how much they talked about it, you would have thought that you would have seen it. And we didn't see any of it. And that was interesting. Um, Casey Cat, I think we tried to link it. I don't have a link for it. It's yesterday's hoodie's not sponsored. It's from Free People. Um, it's on their website. So I I don't have I don't have a link, but that's who makes it. Is there a time limit on closing? Oh, we got to that. Will Alec Murdoch still be held in jail if found not guilty regarding the financial charges? Yes. If he is, if he is acquitted, and we're not there yet, but if he is acquitted, um, if he is acquitted, then I think we will see a new bail motion with regard to letting him out. So I think we'll see a new bail motion to reset his bail and bond. But I still think it's going to be in that six, seven million dollar range. So I, I think he'll be in custody either way. Um, oh, cleaning company. Sorry, chat. Why didn't they hire a cleaning company? Um, I think the witnesses that were testifying about being out at the kennels were testifying that they were out of the kennels the next morning. They wouldn't have even connect, connected with victim witness assistants. They wouldn't have connected with um with anyone yet. And I think they were doing it out of grief, out of not knowing what to do with their hands. We heard um, John Marvin's testimony that just was so sad that John Marvin was like, um, look, I felt like I owed it to Paul to not just leave him there. Um, and so... I think it was part of them not knowing what to do. Once they cleared the scene, I don't think they knew what to do with themselves. And John, I, did John Marvin testify that they tried to call somebody or didn't know or weren't quite sure? There was some testimony like that, but it was so early the next day. From when they left at 4 a.m. to when they returned to the house early the next day, you're not generally going to find someone that can take time. Um, and it can take from the time things happen to the time you actually connect with a victim advocate who can start helping with that, sadly, it can take weeks. Um, often crime victims are left wondering what to do next. The police aren't great at giving them guidance on what to do next. And a lot of times they're like, I can't tell you what to do next. And then the district attorney's office generally are the ones connected with victim witness assistant but you aren't even on their radar as a victim until something's been filed, if something gets filed. So it's a hard, it's a hard thing. Um, and victims of crime are often left not knowing what to do. Um, and it can be a tremendously frustrating process. And you see it in the DA's office. By the time you're talking to them at the DA's office, they've been through it um, in, in so many ways and are deeply frustrated. Some office is better than others, and it just depends on the size of the office, the location. But for so many of you um, and so many people who have been through it, you're left cleaning yourself. And it's horrible and tragic. And so they were going to release the crime scene in Idaho, and the defense put a motion to stop it. I think the Idaho crime scene is getting released, and I believe it's going to be demolished. So... It's a, it's a very, very hard thing. When you look at the the rights of, of accused versus the rights of, of victims, um, the system the victims have to walk through is very difficult and not easy. So um, it's, not, it's not easy. Disney mom said, field trip for my 60th birthday. Everyone's invited. 
<laughs> Field trip to closing arguments. Um, BC Can Can said, my neighbor is a crime scene cleaner. I can't even fathom such needed work. Such needed work. Um, not a lot of people can do it. These jurors are so confused living in this bubble for so long. They will be a hung jury. There will be a hung jury. I don't know about that. I think it's definitely, I mean, I think it's possible. So Moselle will get demolished. I did not say Moselle will get demolished. Moselle is in under contract. Moselle has been sold. The Idaho property is being demolished um, for the Idaho quadruple homicide. So that. Um, let's see. Uh, will I like to stay in the van if he goes to court? If he goes to the crime scene, I don't know. It will depend on um it will depend on the sheriff's department, the policies and procedures of this court, and how they can keep him, how they can keep him safe and then separate from the jury as well. How many years does he get for guilty verdict? If he is convicted, if he is convicted. Um, the sentencing range is, I believe is 25 to life though. It could just be life without parole. I would need to go look. Um, he's, he's likely convicted on this or not. Um, gonna be in custody for the rest of his life either way. Truly. Juniper's tarot and magic said, does the jury get a list of who was paid to appear and who wasn't paid to give testimony? No. Um, just curious, the ones paid off, I don't trust as much. I don't think they're paid off. They're compensated for their time because they're experts. Seems like you can pay off anyone to say anything. I, I don't take umbrage with your opinion. I just take umbrage with paid off. I don't see them as being paid off, but the, um, I mean, the state's witnesses are paid because they're law enforcement. So they're paid to do their job. The state's pathologist is paid because that's the pathologist jobs. The the um, defense experts are paid because they're experts and that's their job. So the only people not really paid are the civilian witnesses who take time out of their life. But I don't see that as being paid off. But that's where you get into this battle of the experts. You get the defense expert and the state's experts and all of them are compensated for their time and they have different opinions. So it, for me, it kind of neutralizes out. The attorneys are paid. I mean, most of the people are paid except the civilian witnesses who are taking time out of their um, time out of their life to come to testify, if that makes sense. Lori said, since AM testified, that's evidence. Yes, everything he said is evidence. Can Alec be prosecuted for one of the murders or are the charges joint and therefore needs to be both? He's been prosecuted for both. Do you mean convicted of one or the other? I. It would be a very strange result if he's, if the verdicts are split differently on the different charges, that would be very odd. Where do you stand now that it's all over? I don't know. I need to, I need more time to process. I don't know where I stand. I, yeah, I don't know. Silly question. Who now, who, how brings his dress clothes? Generally his lawyers would deliver them into custody. He would, I imagine that he has clothes that they have recovered from his home, the lawyers, and they deliver them to wherever he's being housed, uh, the jailer prison where he's being housed closest to the courthouse. And he just switches them out. Um, daily because it seems like he has a couple sets of clothes and those they would just have those there it's often um it's often the job of the lawyers to bring clothes some custodies come some custody locations where people are going to trial have a closet of clothes that that people can wear the public defender's office in la often the branches had clothes that people donated to them um, that people could wear to trial or that the defense attorneys paid for and brought in on their own what if Alex stages a breakdown or something at Moselle in front of the jury? I, the judge will deal with it. Teresa said, never been called to a jury. It must be tough not to be able to talk to anyone. Six weeks of keeping all this in. Yeah, it would be. You can, you can't talk about this case at all. It would be very hard. Very, very hard. Um, my cat's name is Karen. Can he be civilly sued by family members? Um, like Maggie Murdoch's sister, like OJ was, he could be. I don't know how, I don't know if Maggie's sister would want to, but he could be. Um, so I don't think it was Alec um, that it was accidental or anger first shot with Paul and then he killed Maggie to cover it up. Oh, I do think it was Alec. Okay, Jackie's place. Sorry, I misread that at first. Um, 
And we'll see. I don't think that's the state's theory, but the jury will get to decide on their own. Luis said, I like this witness question. Can Alec Murdoch be prosecuted for one of the murders or other charges together? Oh, we did that. I think I saw that twice or I grabbed it twice. He's being prosecuted for both split reason. Split decision would be odd to me. Meredith said, Emily, you are one of the many reasons I've decided to go to law or one of the reasons I've decided to go to law school. Congratulations. So many lawyers have testified in this trial. I just, I mean, it is so many lawyers have testified in this trial. And, and I, I, you could feel Ronnie Crosby's frustration today. Emily, e., I think the comment about a 12 year old suspect are why the AG did the questioning on rebuttal. Maybe it got a little flippant, didn't it? I didn't like that line of questioning at all. Um, specifically asked that day about AM sitting on his heels and his height at that time. Oh, um, they didn't ask about that at all. And they didn't measure that at all. Um, Asai, Asahi, Ashahi, I have pronounced that terribly and I apologize very much. It is late in the day. My brain is very tired. If we get a hung jury, how long does it take usually before the state can get a trial again? It depends with, um, oh, Masterson, the day the jury hung, they scheduled it for like two months later and that's scheduled to go back to trial soon. So that can happen in that way, but it depends on the state. And the state needs time to decide if they are going to retry it or not. Um, question, is there a time constraint for how long the state has to decide? Not really. And I know we talked about that a little earlier. Gingy Prob said regarding experts, is the degree issuing institution ever evaluated in voir dire? I've never seen that. Um, also, my wife is doing well after post-op complications. I'm so glad. Thanks to you and the law nerds for the distraction. You're welcome. That's what we are here for. Would the AG take over next time if a hung jury? I have no idea. Question, does Alec Murdoch have a trial date for the financials? Not yet. Emily, can lack of morality lead the jury to believe he's guilty? Um, Alec's lack of morality? I mean, they can evaluate whether he told them truthful testimony. If they think he lied about being there because they thought he was there and did it, then... Yes, they can use that against him. Um, they can use all of his testimony against him. So I hope that helps. Question, do they have to convict on premeditated murder? Is crime of passion an option? They charged him with premeditated malice of forethought murder. So that is what they have to find him guilty or not guilty of. Edward said, question, if the jury hangs and if the state wants to retry, do they get to use the same testimony and analysis of the evidence? Yes, they get to use the same witnesses or not. Um, and all of those witnesses would have other testimony out there. And it would end up a little bit like Depp v. Heard, where you get um, you get like people flipping through books. But didn't you say this? And didn't you say that? It becomes and can become much, much messier. <laughs> much, much messier. Um, give me one second. I want to grab something on my computer. Um, all right. So let's see, perhaps the defense should be asked why they are renting an Eden at Gracefield, why they are renting Eden at Gracefield for $20,000 a week for the duration of the trial. <gasps> Maybe they should. Um, it's not relevant, but it'd be funny. Fearful nature if the defense asked the judge if they can split the closing arguments, can the state split as well? The defense asked and it was denied. Uh, Amanda said, knowing the casualness of this trial, I could see theatrics at jury view. Alex collapsing in tears, Putin, Jim embracing him, hogs running wild. I, who knows? I imagine they will try to keep a very tight rein on it. Is the missing clothes as important as I think it is? I don't know. It, the state is accusing Alec of changing his story after he was confronted with the Snapchat video of the tree and of the video taken of the kennels. But the same can be said of the state. They ran down the hole of like, he must've been wearing this white shirt that had no blood on it, which doesn't seem to make any sense. He must've been wearing this white shirt. And then they got the Snapchat video and went, oh, these maybe are the clothes, but they didn't do it in August. They didn't do it until much later after they got the confirmatory testing. So both sides could be said to have changed their strategy. Emily, if a hung jury, they will try it again and get the same judge. Um, wait, 
if it's a hung jury and they try it again, does the same judge get pointed to their case? Not necessarily. Um, it depends on if this is where the judge normally sits, if this judge is retiring, um, which I have seen reports of, it really just depends. So if they can have the same judge, they will. If there's a reason they can't have the same judge, then they won't. But they don't get to shuffle judges because they get a new trial. Kelly said this is theatrical, but doesn't really clear up or prove that it is even possible that AM could have done this via science. Just more phone flipping and shaking. I think that was from much earlier today. Um, Anna said, my mind is gone so far down the gutter in 0.2 seconds. Well, yes, we all did. Yes, we all did. Um, let's see. Nicole has ADHD, says you, Rob and Runkle, have inspired me to start a channel. Yay. Um, until it is up, then I'm going, then I'm on the gram. Well, congratulations. And that's exciting. Sorry, I couldn't read the end. It was fragmented funnily for my brain. Kay Turner said, will the jury be sequestered after the charge? I've seen no evidence that the jury will be sequestered after the charge. Wendy Trauma Warrior, thank you for your clear expectations or clear explanations, Emily. You're welcome. As a trauma nurse, I have a new respect for the stress attorneys go through. I don't have the patience. I mean, I don't either anymore. It's a lot. It's a lot. Um, nay, Renee Hearn Lovato, I'm so sorry for your experience. It's it's very hard. I know you're not alone in this chat on what you have been through, but thank you for sharing that with the law nerds. Um, Agape Forever said I was leaning towards not guilty and of course, the motive is beyond me. AM has lied to the degree that nothing coming out of his mouth is believable, in my humble opinion. Tapestry Man said in New Hampshire, jury view was called a go-see, which I love, by the way. I love a go-see or a looky loo. And both counsels were allowed to mark point to mark point out items of significance. And we asked questions to clarify. Very different. In SC, the lawyers cannot engage with the jury. Correct. The jury the lawyers can't engage and the jury can't ask. Correct. It's odd. I agree. It's very odd. Um, all right. Chat, it is time. It is time. What was the email? We still don't know. But talking about emails, if you want your discount for the Lawn Nerd Shop, lawnerdalert.com, our Valentine's mugs are done tonight. So if you have not gotten that yet, go get it. Go get it now. Um, or we have lots of mugs. Or Coffee and Cursey. Or I Have Questions. There are lots of options. So if you guys aren't on lawnerdalert.com yet, you broke it so successfully that I think it won't break now. So I appreciate you, Lawnerds, for being the most incredible community. A huge thank you to our moderators for a much longer trial than any of us anticipated. The end is nigh. I'm going to set the stream for tomorrow, and we will figure out what we want to do while we're waiting. Um, maybe we'll go through that mischief case for the Supreme Court while we're to cover while we're waiting. Um, maybe we'll just do a Q and a of all the things like an AMA. I'll think about it and figure it out. I make no decisions right now cause I'm tired and my brain hurts and my ears hurt and I'm just done. So with that law nerds, thank you for being here. Thank you for being law nerds. I will talk to you soon. It is time. It is time to go. Good night. Have a good night and goodbye. I can't wait to see what everybody else thought of today. Today was Today was a roller coaster of emotion and I'm glad to be off. I'm going to I'm going to go take a bath. Bye. <laughs> you can find all the Law Nerd goodies at lawnerdshop.com. Connect with me on social media at the Emily D Baker and don't forget to check out my podcasts, The Emily Show and the new podcast Quick Bits, summarizing everything I talk about on my Tuesday and Thursday live streams. You know, when you only have time for just the quick bits. <laughs>